Got Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your Sexy Ranch and co-host Calderness. This isn't a classic episode in the normal sense. Uh, it is a live episode here, well, live-ish episode here at Worlds in Memphis, Tennessee. We have Scott, the main promoter of WizKids at the game here. You're like head coordinator. What What is your official title, I guess? I feel bad. Well, I, I, I work on events, but I also uh, HeroClix design development. So the events coordinator, HeroClix designer, everything. A man of many hats. Yeah, what's the, uh, it's all a happy team, so I'm, I'm part okay. of uh, both those teams. But. Right, and then uh, the man we love because he does the fan appreciation, everybody gets to show off all the cool goodies, and everyone loses their mind over, which is always awesome. It's my favorite, one of my favorite things, absolutely, to do. So it's kind of what we're talking about here. Uh, you dropped a lot of bombshells at the fan appreciation yeah. last night, and we kind of we got to dive into that. We wanna, we, we're hungry for more. It's knowledge. It's like uh, Starship Troopers. Do you want to know more? And we do. We're clamoring to know more. There is a uh, link where you can find a little bit more let's, that they dropped uh, earlier. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, make sure to check out the WizKids Facebook page. Um, it's one of the most recent posts. But by the time you hear this or see this, uh, we'll probably have to add the link to the description for you to find. But um, yeah, um, I guess before we get into the big news kind of stuff that we want right, to talk about, right? Uh, it's the first Worlds in person since 2019, and it's yes. back in Memphis. Happy what was it here. like going through the process of getting back in the swing of things? I know you guys, there was tentative talk. You guys did like a poll at one point. You are really trying to like figure out like when was it safe to get everyone again? Uh, like really wanted to do it again. Obviously all the players really wanted to do it again. But what was it like when you finally got the go ahead and uh, decided to come back? You know, it's just like riding a bike after you fell off the bike and skinned your knee. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, we obviously had, uh, we ran in 2019, uh, things were yeah. great, we were so excited to come back in 2020, things happened, we have it, we're back here now, yep. um, but uh, this is such a great venue for us, uh, we're so happy to have a place that we can just to ourselves, basically, uh, bring in uh, the Hero Clips players, the Dice Masters players, not have to have to buy a badge and be a part of a bigger show. Um, it's our community right. to just celebrate the game and play all weekend. And that's the best part. And I, people loved Origins. We loved Origins at Gen Con and everything. But it is, you know, $120-ish, $150 badge to get into those events. Yeah. And instead here, it's like, well, it's free. And you just come in, you play, pay for your boosters, whatever. And that's just, it's huge. I love it. That's why I think everybody loves Graceland. You just get to show up. There's nice people here at Graceland. It's really fun. We so. have so much space this year. Yeah, both. In 2019, both, we, uh, both we had moves. this one. And I know you guys were using the other one for, like, other stuff as well last year. But um, having the Battle Royales and Dice Masters and, like, the side events in one, that was a really awesome call because it's, like, so spread out. It's so easy to move around. And, like, I haven't yeah. seen anybody trip or draw. I haven't heard any... Uh, you know, figures splash oh, yeah, across the, the ground, of, right? Of tokens, the like yeah. the dreaded oh. noise when like all the <laughs> dice and tokens go flying. Um, so that's this really was, cool. Uh, we did want to spread out um, for COVID safety reasons to get some social distancing, so we did utilize uh, both bays here. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we're, we're probably a little spoiled here. This is more, more elbow room than we get at yeah. most events when we're. Uh, packed oh, into a definitely more. Hall yeah. Of other, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes it's very hard to squeeze between the tables, you know, but here we've got yeah. plenty of aisle space. Uh, we wanted to get, you know, nice air circulate, keep nice air circulation. Um, and uh, we hope that we can, uh, you know, continue using uh, both yeah. rooms uh, in the future uh, and, and even expand. We've got enough space that we can even add more tables and expand in other years. I like that. I like the idea of expanding the rooms. I was honestly scared. I'm like, I hope this isn't the last year we do get two rooms. You know, I think hopefully with the growth of Hero Post and everything that we keep up with the two rooms and maybe more. I think that'd be incredible. Last time, this is kind of like a mini world discussion here. You guys did do some side events. You didn't do as many side events as you guys did this year. I believe there's the, uh, the Battle Royale side events, and then there was like the indie Marvel DC side event, where it's like you built one DC, one Marvel, one DC. Yeah, you had to build one of each now, and then one with all three. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, and then you guys really ramped up side events. So like, I think the inspiration, like Tinker Taylor, that was like the Scott Porter's little like fun thing one time. We right. seen he was in, which is an awesome reference. Uh, and you, and you, and you guys, hey, I've heard you guys, you. I've heard you guys thank say you. it too. Yeah, yeah. That, no, I mean, that bumper, hilarious. that bumper's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's really awesome, you know, hey, Simi does good work, you know, yeah. so, uh, why'd you guys, uh, I guess, 
you guys saw that there's like a need for more side events, or you really wanted to bring more, have some more uh, options to play, or what was the yeah? We want to make that? sure that you know if people are going to take the weekend and come down here and travel, that uh, we have something for everybody. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, not necessarily everybody wants uh, is is vying for the world championship. You you want to play battle royales, but have something that's a little more casual, a little more laid back, uh, and especially if you want to come with uh, uh, friends, family, and play in a group on one event where you're not getting split up into individual, uh, oh yeah, you know, individual pairings. So, right. for sure. so as, make sure that everybody has uh, a format that they enjoy. Uh, options for them to, uh, to play. Yeah, and I think uh, as someone who, and you've mentioned this before too, how the favorite part of Hero Quest can sometimes just be building a team, just working on how to make a team. The Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy was perfect for that. That was like so fun to try to build a team for that. Same thing with like Extreme Terror with the 400 modern instead of 300. So much more, like so much fun to try to build a team when you change the parameters like that. I, I, I do love that you guys did that. I hope you guys keep doing that stuff in the future. It's, it's really awesome. Yeah, we want to keep your, your brains going. Yeah, absolutely. Team oh, building. Yeah, <laughs> so it's fun. So, uh, Simeon, you want to add about uh, Memphis before we potentially get into some? Uh, no, like, I, I think this year has been awesome. I mean, last night we hung out in the lobby for quite a bit yeah, longer than we intended to, but man, the lobby after the lobby after like a big Hero Clicks tournament is crazy and like you get so many opinions so many like interesting topics and stuff um yeah i think, I think that's also one of the huge advantages of here is yeah. the guest house of great graceland is a fantastic hotel it's right yeah. across the street if we're at another bigger convention the hero clicks players aren't necessarily all staying in the same hotel right you're going Whereas, to like the cheapest one or the one closest to the venue right yeah. so you might run into some people here and there uh, after hours, but here, after hours, you go to the hotel. Everybody's hanging out in the lobby. Everybody's yeah. out back. Yeah. Every, you know, like so. It's it's all hero clicks all day. You know, all the time, which is wonderful and uh, great for community building. Great for everybody to be able to catch up. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen each other for a couple of years, so you yeah, know, it's, it's, uh, I, I do. I agree. Perfect opportunity for all that. It's really cool seeing everybody just chill out. Totally different space. There's nothing on the line. We're just hanging out, talking, talking about whatever. You know. I know I love just uh, <laughs> I will say one final thing that I have to ask uh, because we've asked so many people this this weekend is what has been your favorite part of the event so far? Uh, my favorite part of the event so far. Um, I, I I think I just said it actually. I mean, I, I, I miss it, you guys. The community. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, I, it's, it's, yeah, we, we, I've always... Uh, you know, this is the extended family, right? Uh, you know, yeah. We see each other at shows. Um, we have, you know, not only the players, but uh, we have such a great uh, group of event staff that come and help us out. And, uh, you know, it's keeping in touch on social media is great, but, yeah. you know, to be able to see people in person and catch up is, uh, is a whole different thing. So I'm really happy to be able to catch up with everybody that's here yeah. um, and see how everybody's doing. And You're definitely not alone in that sentiment because, like, we've had probably, like, four or five, I don't know, We've had a lot of people that have said similar things where it's like, you know, it's been three years. I don't get to see everyone, but like I've been playing with them online for three years. Yeah. And I, like, I finally got to meet these people or like it's just great to see the people that I haven't seen in a yeah, long time. Face to a name. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a lot of people love this community. And sometimes I don't know why because uh, uh -huh. me and Calder are in it and we're kind of the worst. <laughs> Well, you skew the average, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. still, it's still yeah. yeah, the no, Belker, but In yeah. all seriousness, I'll say, like I, I have always said, I think the Hero Clicks has one of the best communities out there. I mean, it's we are we are a, a friendly group, helping group. Um, it's you know, yes, it's a competitive scene, yeah. mm -hmm. but you know, not necessarily cutthroat. Right. Um, and uh, and I, you know, the the, the amount of uh, support. Uh, that, that is shown from all the players uh, to other players from all over the world. Yeah. Um, and yeah. It's, uh, yeah, we've got awesome a guy. Community. We talked to a guy from all the way from Italy. Italy, yeah. And yeah. Uh, in 2018, there was a team from Italy that came. And so I got to hear the story of, like, that team and, like, why he's the only one that came this year and how he had to spend 14 hours in O'Hare Airport by himself oh, no. on a layover. Oh. And it was, like... Dedication. I will say that. Yeah, like he's, he's very it, dedicated. Man. He's been yeah. so fun to talk to this whole weekend. And everything. Yeah, he's, he's like, very positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a little sad that like the euros dipped, so like his exchange rate wasn't as good. But uh, yeah. other than that, I mean, I, I, I did, uh, I did chat with him, and he yeah. did say he had travel delays. I didn't realize it was to that extent. Oh, no. but, it, yeah, <laughs> it sounded like 
a nightmare for me. I was like, I think they made a movie with Tom Hanks right. about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's almost the same like, thing, but oh. yeah. Um, but seriously, that is like the best part. And I, if you look at all the interviews we have on our YouTube channel, guys, you'll see the same thing. So many people said, again, just seeing people. It's seriously so fun to see all these familiar faces and everything hang out. And like I said, up here with this community being like kind of nicer and a better community than a lot of people. That's true. We've talked to Magic players before where it's like, yeah, they would not have let me like take in any of this like turn back if I would have messed up or whatever. And here it looks it's like, oh, hey, remember roll for shape change? Remember roll for super senses? Like people are so much nice. I mean, I'm not going to say nicer, but I'm saying we're very nice and cordial. We yeah. all want to know. It's all a game we want to play to have fun and have a good time. Yeah, nobody you know? nobody wants to win because of a That's gotcha cheat. moment yeah. or something like that. You know, you, you know. and, and uh, I, I think it's really improved over the years. I mean, yeah. uh, the, and uh, we've really, uh, uh, you know, fostered a, 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 a sense of uh, community and support right. and, and win because you built a good team, you piloted it well, you right. rolled well. Yeah. But not because you caught your uh, opponent in an error or, or some some you know minor uh, infraction or something like that. So it's uh, um, it's it's a, it's uh, yeah absolutely a, a, right. A, hopefully a, a welcoming experience even for newer players. And that's yeah. another thing actually I'll say here. Um, there's been a, I, I've met a lot of folks uh, that this is the first time they've been to a, a big event for right, Hero, yeah. HeroClix, you know, outside their local venue. Um, so we want to make sure that it's a, 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 a positive experience for them, and uh, and I feel very confident that everybody's very welcoming here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I will say <laughs> because this year is like special for us. Uh, I've never spent any time over at the Dice Masters table in previous years. But, like, I've been doing some coverage and stuff over there. And yeah, uh, Dice game. Masters are just as good. Like, they're just as nice, if not nicer. Like, they're oh, absolutely. They're nice. trying That's to, awesome. like, force me into, like, to be one of them. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't left, like, treats along the way to, like... <laughs> little, little, yeah. little line of dice. Yeah, yeah like, like Kit Kats over there. Like, like, yeah, oh, man, really they, yeah they left out food. And then they were like, oh, by the way, there's a box with dice and stuff. And, like, I can I can help you build a modern team real quick. And I was like, uh, oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, like, that maybe, maybe. Dice but, uh, Masters, Hero Clicks. I mean, if you need to borrow a figure, you know, yeah. you, need, you know, just reach out ask ask around and everybody's willing, yeah. willing to help them. that that is that yes i i'm i'm hero clicks you know centric in terms of working on that but dice mass is a wonderful community as well uh, a bunch of great people yeah sure. we also saw probably one of my favorite things i've seen this year which is a, a play mat with jimmy's face oh on yeah it. Right. i'd never <laughs> seen yeah. that. i had never seen wow. that before and that was yeah. uh quite awesome um but yeah let's to take a line from Hamilton, uh, the issue on the table is objects. There's a big change coming to objects with the Batman set, right? We got to see a glimpse of that in the fan appreciation event with the Green Lantern ring. And we also got more of an understanding with it when we saw uh, Dexstar's dial missing, like, the construct trait and everything. So uh, if you want to go into that a little bit, the whole news about objects, obviously we, we know what you said about everything, that you can just pay for the object and it begins the force equipped. Uh, if you want to go into like specifics about that for people at home that inquiring minds want yeah, to know. Yeah, absolutely. We um, uh, basically did a sneak peek here uh, for yep. folks who are here at uh, at Worlds um, because you know you guys are obviously very uh, involved in the game and interested in the rules and knowing what's yeah. coming up. So we wanted to give a little bit of a sneak peek, but you know I put some meat to the bones now. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit more details about what's coming up. Um, just to you know uh, to start off with a little bit of context. I know you know. Sometimes people get a, a little squirrely when we start talking about rules changes, but you know, let's call it a rules update. I mean, okay. this, uh, what we're doing is is going to uh, make some some tweaks uh, to to some of the rules. Uh, but I think uh, a lot of what we'll talk about right now is within the greater context uh, of the rule set that you're familiar with, right. um, and uh, just in a different way that adds uh, some great strategic elements. Uh, and also sort of trim some of the trim some of the fat. Yeah. Know, like, like, yeah. Like that's uh, since Wonder Woman uh, and the rules updates that we did with that, where uh, some items we've you know just decided like you know pushing damage. Uh, did this really need to be part of the game? Uh, was it was it worth the um, uh, the amount you know the the, the time and learning curve uh, right. and. Uh, did it add that that amount of strategic elements of the game that that uh, 
offsets that. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but like to me, I you know I was a little hesitant at first, uh, being a long time HeroClix player. I mean, I've been playing for 20 years myself, right? And uh, and I was like, wow, this is, you know, it's just it's ingrained. But now when I play the game, it's like I don't even it don't even realize it. Yeah, doesn't, I don't even think about it. Doesn't, we, don't miss it. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't even come up to me. So. Uh, so, you know, we've really been looking at things through a new prism or perspective of what is really sort of, you know, necessary or makes more sense uh, for the yeah. game. So, uh, with that... Um, yeah, we're about, about, sorry, we're about to get a, a lot of noise here. Oh, okay. We're going to get yeah. a little bit closer to Scott. Oh. It's called Last Action. People are going to be... Moving, yeah. hustling, bustling yes, around. Yeah, Sorry, I don't. Straight. I don't want to lose anything. That's right. I. I want everybody wants to know what you have to say. And I don't want to lose it. It's really important. Sorry. Go okay. ahead. Let me catch the, you um, so with Batman team up. Yeah. We are going to uh, make some updates to the equipment rules, and with the equipment rules right yeah. now, within the context of the rules, when we came, when we first uh, established equipment, equipment are objects. They are classified as objects, so they are. Um, Objects are something that you add, add to your force and you place in the map at the beginning of the game. But it makes sense from a rules perspective that equipment would fall in the category of objects, but it doesn't make sense that they would start on the map. Right. You know, Batman doesn't start with his belt on the floor. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. Like, um, I, I should have picked a different object to keep this uh, PC, but... Um, That's right. He's <laughs> Batarang or something. Right, exactly. Right. Batman Batarang. So, um... It makes more sense that you would just, if you want to play equipment, that it starts equipped. We, of course, since Black Panther and Illuminati, you've seen a lot of traits on characters yeah. that say you get to start the game with a certain equipment equipped, uh, and which means at no cost. Yeah, so to, to go with that, like the chase cap, who's like you know oh, with the reaching up with the yeah. gauntlet, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It wouldn't really make sense if he had to go and like pick up the gauntlet exactly. that he's like sculpted with. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Green Lantern with his ring. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Like, like time out, uh, everybody. Okay. Which door did I? It's like he, he lands in the battlefield. Oh, no, he fumbles it. Well, let me just. <laughs> yeah. All right, now we're good. Yeah. So, um, and uh, you know, quite honestly, it, it slows the game down. Uh, it does because we, what we call the equipment dance, where you spend the first couple of turns like sending someone out to pick it up, bring it back. Uh, equip it, uh, so so that aspect slows the game down. There's also a little bit of a chilling effect of if if I'm going to play an equipment, but it's not an equipment that starts on a character, and I have to put it on the map. I'm worried about it getting sniped. Yeah. Um, you know, if I go second, is the uh, is the opponent going to be able to come across uh, come across the map and snipe it out from under me, and then I have I, you know this throws off my whole strategy. So it just makes more sense thematically, uh, it makes more sense strategically, uh, and it also speeds up the game to just say equipment is still, um, they're still considered objects, but yeah. the distinction between equipment will be that they are put on your force during force construction right. instead of uh, being placed on the map during game setup. And they won't be one of your three objects that you're allotted. Correct. So it will not. It will not count towards your allotment of those of those three objects that you're placing on the map. Okay. So, usually that means you can only ever get three equipment objects or three standard objects, right? So now, can I start the game with just as many equipment as I want? If I pay as for it, I pay have for. as many as I want to pay for. It. Okay. That's that's what I was really curious about. Because I mean, that's the same thing. If I have a million sword bearers or something on my team, it would work the exact same way, basically paying for that. Okay. Yes. Cool. I was wondering about that. And then, expanding beyond that. Okay we will keyword equipment. Right. Which will then mean that you are going to be able to uh, place uh, or assign a, a equipment to characters that have a magic keyword at no cost. Right. So uh, basically how it'll, uh, the wording will be that you will be able to uh, add it to your force at zero points but when you assign it to a character it must be a character. If, if you added it to your force right. at zero you must assign it to a character that has a matching keyword. We've seen similar stuff with like the the map bonuses that exactly. kick off oh, with yeah. like keywords. So yeah. that's yeah. And I mean, this most is where I come in. I'm saying like yeah. a lot of what we're talking about is not necessarily breaking new ground. And like 
when I say the word assign, you guys know what I'm talking about because yeah, that right. was something that you, we used to use for resources. Yep. You so, resources, so yeah. you know, the concept of assigning something during force construction yeah. is not new, but it's just going to be a new implementation with equipment right. that you will be able to assign it to characters. Um, so, for example, uh, we showed off previews of the Green Lantern ring. Yeah. The Green Lantern ring is going to obviously have a keyword for Green Lantern core which means any Green Lantern Corps character, you can assign the ring and add it to your force at zero, uh, zero cost, right. assign the ring to someone who's got that Green Lantern Corps keeper, and now you're going to be able to have access to all the constructs that are in that set. It means that we don't have to put on a character card the trait that says yeah. this character can be given, you know, assign, uh, can start the game with the Green Lantern and the ring equipped. Um, so it frees up all that uh, space of the card so we could do other different cool effects yeah. for that character. Um, and it's beautiful because it's completely backwards and forward compatible. It is, yeah. You yeah. put the keyword Green Lantern Cord on the equipment, well, any Green Lantern Core that you have from the past, any Green Lantern Core that we make in the future, you're going to have access to that ring uh, awesome. at, at no point. So it just makes sense. It does, yeah. It does seem, yeah, it does seem more intuitive than, um, and also just, it's more consistent because, uh, like, some sets you'll, have, like, pay five points instead of, like, the ten to start equipped, whereas, like, other sets, someone will just, like, start with an equipment. Like, Wonder Woman just, like, started with a Wonder Woman equipment, but, like, other people, you don't pay five points. Now it's just, like, going forward, it'll just be, if you have keywords, you don't pay the cost, and if you don't have the keyword, you do pay the cost. Yeah, yeah. We equipment is an important part of the game. Uh, it's exciting to add those game elements um, that you know pulled from the pages of comics. And uh, when we've been adding so many of those traits, that because obviously, starting with equipment, and not paying, not paying anything for it is just better. Yeah, um, yeah. That it's more, it's more exciting that way, and again, makes more thematic sense that you start with it, anyways. When we've been writing out all these traits to add equipment, we just really at one point sat down and said, do we really need to, you know, is right. there a better we way? We do this a lot. We do this with the gems. We do this in Disney Plus. We're doing this with swords. Like, guys, we're kind of, yeah. we could save space here. I, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also, you know, and, and it, we have to then choose specific characters yeah. that we're giving that to. Um, so, for example, like you might in see in sets like commons and in commons that we want to keep simpler, don't have these uh, traits because right. we don't want to saddle them with these with these big text based powers. Now they'll still have access to that yeah. just because it'll be it'll be keyword based. And it was really just because, you know, equipment was under the category of objects. And that's how objects operated that they start right. on the map. And so we really just sort of took a step back and said like there's a better way we could do this yeah. and and it's 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 actually very simple you know just yeah. to sort of recategorize and say the difference in equipment is that they add, they get added to your force instead of being put on the map now you'll still see with equipment it'll still say like you know it's going to take a power action to equip and uh, indestructible and everything else because right. there is uh, situations where you might get unequipped during the game and it ends up on the map. Right. right. So then you still have to take okay. a power action to yeah. put it back on or, you know, that sort of thing. So all that still applies. Uh, it's just that you don't have to do it at the beginning of the game and spend your first couple turns, you know, picking yeah. it up, putting it up, and taking the power action and equip it. And, and uh, the, again, the equipment dance. People are going to be so happy about that. It's like, you know, I, your, even my team. casual group. Like my my more casual group, I <laughs> they think, still haven't even figured out the equipment dance. Well, sometimes. yeah, so they like move because up we're not competitive at power all. Action, pick it, it up. We'll move, like pick it up. Next turn, like maybe move, pick it up, take it back. Then second turn, equip, and then third turn, clear. And so that'll free up the first three turns yeah. of like for some, yeah. for some characters. Exactly. So right to your point that you said earlier about speeding up the game. You yeah. Know? yeah. If you don't spend the first two three turns sitting in your you know starting areas and and uh and working out how you're how you're managing your equipment uh you know figuring out how you're going to set up your team at the beginning of the game so it's like knowing that you need to send someone out and pick some of that up yeah you know just get right into the the strategy of getting across the map because we have john walker with us 
I do have a question about keywords cool. though. Yeah. So when you have like this might be like a design kind of question. When you have a character that they have a equipment that's like so specific to them that they would probably be the only person that uses it, like John Walker's shield, the right, US Agent shield. shield. He's the only one that can come equipped with it. Uh, would you still use a keyword or would you have to like defer to a trait? Would you like would John Walker get like I don't know, jerk? For a keyword, uh, soldier brute. Thank you very much. I know, I know a keyword U.S. agent has, and then celebrity soldier. All right. I'm thinking of like a Jeez. named one just for him though. And thunderbolt too oh, in yeah. the future. Guess, if you yeah. know, if it happens, I'm not saying There's, anything. Um, but. Uh, keywords is is the easiest way to make uh, make an equipment available to a wide variety of uh, figures. Uh, there's certainly an opportunity where we could still have uh, either a trait on uh, a John Walker or something specifically on the, um, uh, the equipment, equipment itself, itself. Yeah. that references him. You'll notice okay. actually on the uh, Green Lantern ring, for example, that, uh, and we've done this like the Wonder Woman object, uh, oh, yeah. the Wonder Woman equipment yep. was, you know, yeah. if you're named Wonder, you, you get to use the effect, but if you're named Wonder Woman, you get sort of a bonus effect. Yeah, so that better. you'll probably see something like that where it could be the uh, John Walker shield. This is an example, you know, you're using that example. Uh, John Walker shield has right. uh, an effect, but if the character who it's equipped to is named John Walker, you get some bonus effect. Right. So we could do it, we could do something that way to give, uh, to match characters more finely tuned than okay. just the keyword. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I uh, we just mentioned a lot about speeding up the game, and this is nothing specific to equipment, but I think for the past few years, it's just been we are finding a way to make the games go faster. Being able to look at the back of the card, figure out your turn, makes the game go faster. The no pushing damage, and I think all the one woman changes made the game go way faster as well. The no decision for CCE, RCE anymore, way faster. The object change, way faster. Honestly, like worlds happening all around us right now would be a thousand times faster just getting rid of all the object dance you know and everything going on. Yeah, so I love that. Yeah. I mean uh, essentially yeah. in high competitive both people's first turn is like an equip turn. Like yep. there's not right, usually yeah. I mean if you're going second you're obviously not attacking but like if they're going first they're probably just going to equip and stay in their starting area like that's you know if you just get rid of that then it's you know they still have first turn immunity but maybe they move their force out like or maybe they just, you know, they both pass their first turn and then it's like slam into each other. And yeah, and you know, sometimes there are those things that happen in games where it's like, you know, my opponent got in my face so fast, I can't even waste time to equip right now. You know, there are some yeah. games that are just like that. So I do, yeah, I super love this challenge. I, I mean, I think people are going to enjoy some, it. Some folk yeah. strategy to, to it disrupt is, yeah. the equipment dance of right. the other opponent. Yeah. They get the, that leg up in a way. Yeah, so, we well, talked to. Equipped, uh, so you have to. We did talk to somebody that won by five points because uh, he generated yeah. a Latvian peasant on that map and stole somebody's cloak of levitation and then smashed it, and so he right. won by five points yeah. from that cloak, um, which is a fun story. But like going forward, but not having to worry a about that. Terrible comic. Yeah, <laughs> thank it you. Would. That's it's not a very thematic <laughs> right. battle. No, if, if God Emperor Dooms like God Emperor Dooms crushes back the there. cape and go then, and get him. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the peasant. Here you go, my lord. He yeah. snaps it, like rips the cape in half. He's like, "All right, I'm satisfied." Yeah, that's <laughs> all I wanted. Out for now let's minutes. get out of here. Yeah, yeah, let's go hang out. See you later. You know, because that's uh, to me, Heroclix is a, a cinematic story. Every game has a chance exactly. to like tell a story. This is something uh, I once did in a creative writing class. I know. They stop. We're all nerds, okay? Let me take my own creative fan writing fiction. class. Fan fiction. He meant you. fan fiction. It is fan fiction. That's really what it was. They said, play a game and then want you to write a story. They didn't care if it was Mario Kart or whatever. Me and my buddy played I a... Uh, oh, no. No. Sadly, this was like a typing essay type thing. <laughs> um, a creative... Yeah, I know. It's even nerdier than that somehow. But we played a Heroclix game and I had to write out every action as if it was like... Punisher going down the halls to stop some bad guys. The bad guys mean like the Bash Rocks Brigade or something. Oh, oh yeah, balls. I've and, seen, I've seen and, people do like after action and, reports. Right, games they would do those reports. And write it and, out as if it was, as a, if it was like, a movie, yeah, a comic book. So, like that Doom we just talked about right there, that's not super interesting of a comic. So, I, I love games where there's that ebb and flow. Competitive players probably don't care to ever be down on points, but I kind of think it's fun. It's like, ooh, underdog time, you know, can the heroes win again, you know, or whatever. So, I like that, I like that telling the story and everything game. But just because we were on that for a second, I had to talk about how terribly nerdy I was years ago. But all right, 
Uh, uh, let's absolutely. let's. <laughs> a, a creative outlet. Yeah, 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 and that's why Heroes is awesome. Yeah, a little bit of shame. Do we want you to can feel a little bit of shame. About I that. well, it's all right. Let's do uh, the terrain. Well, between you guys, there's yeah. some busting the there, chops, but you there's, know. you know, we don't pull any punches. We really don't. Nor actual physical punches. Really. Yes, or but, yeah, chair uh, shots. Uh, so yeah, to go from objects because the to, object slot is now open. We'll, we'll let this ride, I guess. Yeah. You, can, you can listen in. Yeah. X of Swords, Bricks and Boosters for sale. Oh. Yes, main set. <laughs> yes, main set. I knew that would be a question, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fair Can I get month three? So, back to what I was saying. Um, Flawless transition. Yeah. <laughs> because the equipment uh, is no longer taking up object slots, um, you have those completely open, and you guys decided to do something a little bit innovative and completely different, like something that we really haven't seen before. I mean, we've seen, I guess we have seen special terrain before that you could put on your build. Right, but that was like a dial versus a, uh, yeah. you know, actual marker. And most of that, like, had to be blocking just by... Like, you know, yeah, couldn't occupy. Yeah, what the is space. like, what's the dial with like, I don't know, like bushes, like moving bushes wouldn't make sense, but, um, but yeah, yeah, you guys are making terrain that you can put on your build sheet now. Yes, so, um, just like you said, <laughs> the equipment rules, which certainly made sense on its own, but it sort of opened the path to uh, looking at uh, the objects and how those can be better used in the game. And we're always interested in making the maps matter uh, and, yeah. and be more part of the game. Certainly um, in comics uh, that the battlefield is, is very important. Uh, yeah. You know, where people uh, fight. You know, Spider-Man having a fight with Juggernaut and defeating him by, you know, having having him run into a pit of concrete. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like Using the terrain to your advantage is uh, is comes up in stories and comics all the time. Right. Um, the maps that we play on uh, on printed maps at the beginning of the game are, are pretty static. It's printed now. Of course, we have terrain markers that you can generate during the game. You've got barrier. You've got smoke cloud. Uh, you've got people who like molecule man who can who can uh, generate different type of terrain markers. Right. But we wanted to expand it to be able to um, create train markers that you are now going to be able to place on the map during game setup and then be able to manipulate them in game. So it adds a, a great dynamic element that really uh, makes the map uh, much more important. Right. Um, and, uh, and part of your strategy and part of your uh, initial strategy of how you're going to uh, place them at the beginning of the game to, to your advantage or maybe you know to disadvantage your opponent potentially. Um, but then also uh, during the game, if, uh, be able to manipulate them, have, make attacks with them um, and, uh, and utilize them if they have special effects. So, uh, what you will see now is making um, terrain markers, which could be hindering terrain markers, blocking terrain markers, even elevated terrain markers. That's awesome. We've never seen elevated yeah. terrain markers in the game. Um, and be able to uh, choose strategically uh, what you're going to add to your force yeah. to be able to place on the map. Um, they will be... Uh, uh, objects are going to still be a thing, uh, and right. uh, they will be under the uh, greater umbrella of terrain markers. 
but um, if you look at the game setup now where it says place three objects, it's going to say place three terrain markers. Sure. Okay. So if you want to choose two terrain markers and an object, you know, or, you know, whatever well, combination of. Heavy objects kind of wrote a line between that already. Because they were hindering sort of, they were, yeah, yeah, fire. They were yeah. hindering for line of fire. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and at one point, like, this was a while back, um, also yeah. for movement, right? They, uh, that's all right. They did, yeah, well, that's when back when hindering terrain affected movement. So, yeah, yeah, they did. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, the same. They were just hindering terrain, basically, had these. So, the, I mean, so that did give you, like, a. It did. You guys yeah, it already worked. kind of had, like, a, you know, like, blueprint kind of to work terrain, with, I yeah. guess. Yeah, exactly. Sort of a yeah. piece of hindering terrain that you can throw out there. And you've mentioned that you'll be able to, like, TK this terrain type. So, I imagine, like, telekinesis will get some new wording. Instead of, like, objects will be. Uh, the, the terrain typing and everything. Well, even uh, just to back up, back up a little oh, bit sorry, in yeah. terms of the, the, the core mechanism behind it, um, we ha you have uh, close and range uh, object actions, right? And you have close and range destroy actions. If we just bump that up one notch and say objects are a subset of terrain, right? And we change close and range object actions to close end range terrain actions oh now yeah it functions so exactly, this yeah. you know again i say you know people get a little worried when we say you know rules changes but i'm going to call it rules update right because it's all very familiar territory but 80 percent of this change is tweaking that one word yeah, <laughs> yeah. to yeah, make yeah, it yeah, work yeah. with one level higher of, of markers uh, and it works very similarly to how you interacted with objects on the map, but now you get to interact with terrain markers right. as well. Um, the other, you know, 10%, let's say, is that elevated markers were never a thing. That's insane. <laughs> what, yeah. what was the inspiration to bring elevated markers into it? Were you like, I really wanted to do this? You know, we've never had this before. Always wanted to push well, a man off a ladder. Nor, you know, sure. like like a major part of you know major uh, terrain type. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it uh, it uh, it was a challenge. Yeah. Uh, because you know that's why you can't destroy you know elevated terrain printed on the map. Right? Yeah. You know, but uh, but this is also where you know it comes back in that now it makes sense of bring falling damage back in because yes. there's a lot of strategy to be able to place an elevated terrain, a uh, piece of elevated terrain to block a line of fire, to make a little sniper's nest. Uh, but there's also an inherent danger that if you're going to throw your sniper up there right. and then someone smashes it out underneath you or yoinks it out from underneath you yeah. and then they're going to hit the ground. Yeah, you know? I, I love that. So I, yeah. there's, a, there's a back and forth there. Um, but even, uh, uh, you know, look at uh, uh, a power like super strength. Well, if we say now this super strength can uh, manipulate terrain markers yeah. and pick up, uh, pick up terrain markers, and that's the only way that you can pick them up and use them in close attacks, well, super strength stuff just went way up. Yeah. Hey, yes. I think that's people a nice barrier that, you got sure. there. Yeah. How about I pick up a square of it we've, and hit you with it? We've talked about the <laughs> ways that, like, I mean, obviously we didn't know that this was coming, but no. we've talked about the ways that, like, we would kind of tweak super strength to make it something, like, Word, like that you really feel like you want to have on your team right and yeah seeing like that elevated thing that like elevated terrain piece that you guys showed i was like man i want hulk to like throw that around and like carry right. people like you know he throws it ahead and then hawkeye like runs up there and sh takes a shot and then like i don't know he picks it up again like hits somebody with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah it all just sounds really fun to me and like maybe it's like just crazy but like i don't know why hulk tossing out like Make him like a more of a team player than he normally would be, I guess. Sure, yeah. He he's the, he's moving the ladder around for everybody. Yeah, like stuff. yeah, yeah. yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, pushing the shopping cart with and puts things down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's big, strong. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, um, if you're if you're big and strong, you know, all people do all day is ask you to help them move. That is true. <laughs> that Matt is Reed's true. here. He can attest. Exactly. To that. Can you open this pickle jar? Can you move that thing for me? Like, yeah, yeah. All right. You have your friends over, and it's like, you know, my couch could go a little bit to the left. You're right. Yeah, it's like, come on, Hulk. But no, it's so cool that uh, the terrain interacts like that. It's really cool that it's like elevated terrain too. And you guys have, uh, and, uh, you mentioned fall, falling damage, which I really freaking love. And I love that it's coming back. 
But I do want to stay on terrain just for a second because, oh, God, fall damage so cool. But anyways, uh, terrain here, you've given it all these different combat values. I guess not really combat values in the same sense as we're used to. Uh, but you've given them stats in a way. We saw X's for they're unknowns still, right still now. Values. So they are values. And again, um, this is more just, you know, to mark it on the marker itself. Right. So it's right there, the information's right. on the map. for reference. But easy. Uh, it's all within a context you're familiar with because yeah. obviously in playing with objects, objects have a distance that you can throw them for right. range attacks they have a, a damage value that they that they inherently do they have uh, uh, how much damage it takes to destroy them yeah so it's taking that information but making it variable information that's printed on the marker so what's going to happen is on the terrain markers there's yep. going to be a little uh, a value block or stat block that's going to have um, three different values one of them is going to be the range value, which is split into two. Uh, okay. It's got the little bolt, which is going to say uh, on, on one side of the slash, it's going to be the number that if you were to use it in a range object action, yeah. it's how far you can throw it. Uh, the second one's going to have the little giant symbol, which is uh, if it's a bigger marker. So if it's like a, a two by three, like yeah. you showed an uh, image of the shipping right. container. Yeah then um, you'll be able to have basically grants a giant reach of three squares. Just so, Hulk uh, using it, a shipping container as a huge well, that's, bat. That's what I love too, because we saw like a sentinel arm was one of the objects a long time ago. And really, Hulk doesn't need to be right next to you to use that. It's a huge thing, right? So that's really cool that it gives you giant reach when you smack someone. That's and it's, awesome. yep. to me, it seems, I don't know if like everyone will agree, but it seems very intuitive to me. Like we already have characters that you know, can like have a special equipment that grants giant reach of X or like, you know, whatever it may be, or um, characters that just, for whatever reason, their power set gives them giant reach. So having an, like, you know, a terrain piece that has that printed on it, I think that'll click with a lot of people that have used those characters before, or, like those powers before. And I, one of the, I mean, you just, you just said it, and it, to me, it's intuitive. Yeah. It, you can look at the marker, it's bigger. It makes sense that if it's yeah. three squares, you can hit someone three squares right. away with it. Um, and you can picture it in your head. Uh, so that always helps yeah. the rules and, and explaining it to people. Uh, so it's very visual, just it matches up with the, the size of the physical right. marker itself and the, and the number of squares it is. So um, so that'll be the, uh, the first stat block of the, of the, yeah. the range. The second one will be the damage, which is very similar to you know how we've seen with the um, you know in the past with the distinction with light and heavy objects of, of different uh, damage right. that they do. Well, we'll have, be able to have variable damage. Uh, it'll just like we've always had in the past. There'll be a certain amount of damage it does at range. Okay. Or it'll be a modifier with a plus that is if when you use it in a close terrain action, how much it modifies your your damage value. Okay. Awesome. Um, the the third one, and this is there's going to be a little new symbol for this, will be the destroy value. And that is basically how much damage you need to do to be able to destroy it. So when you take a closer range destroy action, yeah. right now that's written up very specific to walls and blocking terrain. It says you have to have at least three damage. Yeah. That'll just be tweaked to say you need to have the minimum amount of damage that's shown on the mark. Okay. Um, there will be a backwards compatibility where in the rules write up it'll have like default values for older, okay. so things that don't have the, the walls the are very on okay. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that uh, or even just older mark train markers that okay. you know, oh, you've really cool. got your barrier markers that don't have those right. where you just know that it just uses the default value. Um, so that'll uh, and then of course you uh, there's you know, that's the nuts and bolts uh, mechanic part. Yeah. But of course, the exciting part is that we can now put special effects on these things yeah, as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, Spider-Man, I, I, I've always been a Spider-Man fan growing up, you know, yeah. that it's always so iconic, you know, swinging across rooftops. Yeah. Yeah. You've got in New York City, the, the water towers. So well, we could have a water tower in elevated cool. terrain yeah. where when someone destroys it, it generates water terrain. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So like all these cool things that we can do with this uh, with this terrain that really just, you know, you, you can visualize yeah. it. And it makes uh, it makes the game dynamic, but it really um, you you can you can see on the map um, how it's gonna how it's gonna interact. 
and uh, and again all the different special effects you know something that might blow up and do an area effect yeah. something that might you know cause a ongoing damage okay. or, you know that sort of thing and it's all things that we've seen before right with, uh, the old like special objects yeah it was like the satellite marker or like the uh, the hydrant and stuff that yeah. Was cool. like, yeah you know yeah. but it's just category you know opening it up to not just objects but right. terrain, terrain itself okay as awesome. a grown man I'd say that like I'm very looking forward to the set that releases the trampoline terrain. I don't know what it'll <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it would trampoline possibly marker. possibly do, but like, you know, I took my nephew to Trampoline World and uh, I think Hulk and like Spider Man, Captain America would have a heck of a time at Trampoline That'd be pretty World. Pretty awesome. So That'd be pretty cool. Dude. That's my vote. But no, uh, yeah, you said special they'll have like potential for special abilities, um, possibly even like potential for like a point cost if it's like a little bit better than like a normal sure, terrain sure. Yeah, maybe yeah. does because you're adding them to your to your force yeah. uh, at the beginning of the game you know during force construction right. you're adding them just like you would list what objects you're playing with right um so there is the potential just like there's been objects with with uh, special objects with a point value uh there if something has a really you know big effect um then there could be a point value associated with that to add it to your force i really like this for uh I think there's right now a lot of heat about losing map, winning map, and how your opponent, if they win map, get a severe advantage uh, between going first, right, potentially destroying your equipment. I think that's now solved with stuff like this. And then choosing map and a lot of maps being symmetrical can be really tough for a second player. I like the idea that even if I lose map, I then bring my own terrain that can always help me no matter what map I put on. I think that's really huge for like second player stuff right now. So not really so much a question as, was that anything you guys thought of while you're building this? Like, you know, it can kind of suck to lose map, and then you can always know that no matter what, I will have some elevated with me or some blocking with me. It certainly, know? it certainly does give sort of a pressure valve for for players to be able yeah. to, uh, because you're going to have no if you're first or second player before you have to place those right before you actually map. place so, them. Yeah. So you know, if you're first player, you might place things more aggressively. If you're second player, you might place things more defensively. Right. Um, so that that certainly was an aspect of this. Okay. Um, that that playing um, uh, you know, the map choice and then placing, uh, being able right. to uh, have some influence yeah. on the layout of the map, um, either, you know, as I said, uh, uh, offensively or defensively, um, it is going to have a huge strategic impact. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I was super curious about. Yeah. Do you... Uh, do you have a favorite one that you've worked on so far? I guess don't say specifically, but a, a blocking one, a hindering one, an elevated one that you're most excited we're for still, people to see in the future. Yeah, or? I mean, we're, we're we're still in early development okay. on this, okay. um, so there's a lot of you know we're 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 in the brainstorming. Gotcha. Uh, you know, gotcha, like gotcha, gotcha. we're 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 nailed, we've nailed down the the nuts and bolts of the mechanics, right. but now we're in the fun part. Where the we flavor can get creative part. Yeah. And, like, come up with like, oh, this would be a cool, awesome. uh, cool terrain thing. This okay. would be a cool terrain thing. Um, so, uh, so like I, I, the water tower, I kind of say, yeah, like cool. the water yeah, tower like is, is a really cool one. Yeah. That, I mean, that's just so iconic Spider-Man. It know? is. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of potential, um, uh, things that we can do. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, don't worry you'll about have to look it. Don't for, worry about it. You'll have to look, for, look some, for some previews coming up. You to look forward, guys. Yeah, like a, we're still, uh, I, yeah. I don't want to say something that we're not committed to okay. quite yet. That sounds good. A no, steel no cage of, of some fashion. A steel cage. Oh. Perhaps, maybe <laughs> some, some form yeah. of like cage type thing. Well, there, I guess, yeah. for, and again, this may also be something you can't answer, um, but Marvel or DC exclusive ones where it's not so much a, uh, like a water tower. But maybe it's like Batman's Big Penny or something. Uh, oh, absolutely! Or like, oh, cool. there, or like the, the, the spinning the, thing for the Batmobile. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There's there's, like there's opportunity for us to do uh, to pull things that are right out of comics awesome. uh, from okay. that are recognizable. You know, we don't we'll do generic things as well right. that yeah, you yeah, see yeah. Um, that you see on uh, whatever the theme of the map is. Right. But there's certainly the opportunity to do things that are very iconic. Or, okay. or, or tied uh, thematically to uh, characters or a, or a location awesome. um, in, in the Marvel or DC universe. Okay, no, I'm fantastic. I'm always happy to hear that because one of my favorite things with the old objects was like, I get to hit you, not only with the Sentinels are, but like Captain America Sentinels are, is a really funny object. Uh, 
one of my favorite original ones when I was playing anyways was the, uh, the WizKids TV. The TV that has the WizKids logo on it is really yeah. funny. So I do look forward to more like flavorful objects and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. So, all right, let's talk about falling. I love falling. Yeah, it's so yeah. fun to push people off buildings. It's so fun to push people against walls. And now I get a control where terrain might happen where I can push people against walls. Absolutely, or, knock like you damage, said, yeah, pull out damage. a rug from under them. Sure, or or uh, uh, a position blocking terrain behind people before you yes. force blast them. Ooh, you know, aw, or something like that. that. I mean, yeah. like the fact that 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 could be a, a, a potential strategy yeah. around them. That you that you can do with these markers again a lot of strategic layers there yeah. uh, not only within the map setup but how they get manipulated during the game what made you guys want to revisit fall damage pushing or not push, sorry excuse me not push damage I know. Uh, <laughs> knockback damage knockback falling damage. damage stuff like that what made you want to revisit that after the rules change in wonder uh, it just made sense with the train markers. Okay. Uh, yeah i mean like like uh, thematically that right. uh you know again if if, if elevated train was to be destroyed underneath someone but it also means that there's uh it, ad it adds more of a value to these markers in it terms does of, it really does what you can do with them and use them in a game to your advantage to be able to cause some damage um so it does uh, so, almost feel necessary to balance the elevated as well like if there was no so. like no backlash or yeah, like no, no consequence yeah no sure, consequence to it? having it then yeah like you just always be up on it but like if you're like oh He's got someone with super strength. That Superman might come over here and grab that out from under me. Then, yeah. like, maybe I don't just sit up there the whole game, you know? So that does make a lot of sense to have that, like, little fear added to it to, like, yeah. kind of balance. Yeah. Yeah. I've always thought that Elevated was probably one of the strongest types of terrain. I know there's not, obviously, it's not 40 of them. But still, what I've noticed more recently is that blocking is probably the most used marker right now. People are doing tons of barrier and everything. But man, there are some of those elevated maps. Uh, Otherworld Castle Outdoor is just strong. It's crazy insane how like good elevated is. And I know when I was a big, uh, specifically Sniper's Nest, but the Winter Soldier from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, no, sorry, yeah. excuse me, the Winter Soldier movie, Captain America Winter Soldier, he makes the Sniper Nest markers. And it was like, oh, of course I'm going to put them up on some elevated terrain. And now that is exactly quite literally what I would love to do with him with these terrain markers. And it's like, oh, but I could just poop, you know, yoink it from him and now he's going to take some damage. It's really, really cool. And, Man, the idea of bringing elevated terrain to it is really awesome. So, what is uh, what is is there going to be something that we're going to be surprised at? You know, like just overall, like something that you're really cooking up as far as terrain goes, as far as knockback and fall damage comes back, that we're going to be like, oh wow, there's going to be more combos opened up, uh, powers like force blast you mentioned already, moving a uh, blocking terrain, pushing someone into it. Um, there's a couple of other tweaks uh, okay. that. Uh, makes uh makes this work better right. um and i know that you know as people people are listening to this yeah. uh the, the folks who are you know uh rolling this around in right, their head their might already be thinking of some of the pitfalls that we came up in the in the uh, design and development process yeah. uh and i can I, I'll, I'll mention a few of these that uh that are uh adjustments to the rules that that go alongside with this um one of the natural concerns uh, might be to say, well, if I get to place terrain on the map at the beginning of the game, what if I just like cut off like choke points? Right. You know, yeah. like, oh, right. there's, a, there's, Ultra a door, barrier. there's a doorway yeah. here or there's a ladder here. I'm just going to stick a piece of blocking terrain there so the opponent has to like destroy it before they can use it. Um, yeah. So we're going to do, uh, there's going to be a, um, a related uh, tweak to the rules again within the context of the rules that we know right um transition squares so transition okay. squares right now are used specifically for elevated terrain so where you yeah the little elevate, arrows yeah the yeah. little arrows in between the uh the red border uh and it'll be for a uh, a uh, change of elevation okay well we're going to expand we're going to expand the definition of uh transition squares where it might, it's not necessarily going to be on a change of elevation. It will still be used in the traditional okay. set, but we can put in a doorway the little triangle symbols, and it just it will say like one one instead of one two. And at okay. the beginning, what what that will mean, how it will be written in the rules is at the beginning of the game, you can't place any markers in those squares. 
Okay. So during the game, you can move something there, but yeah, just right. during game setup, setup, those spaces can't be, you know, I'd say blocked generically. But right. Like you, can't, you can't place markers place during game setup in those squares specifically, so you can't cut off you know, okay. hallways or doorways or, or um, uh, changes to elevation right. uh, 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 to really, you know, slow down your opponent to a point where it would be unfun. Okay, awesome. Um, uh, I'll, I'll also say this, um, uh, because elevated terrain uh, markers will be brought into the game, and that's, uh, that's a new element. Um, uh, elevated terrain does have the potential, if you're, if you're not a flyer, uh, to really slow your opponent uh, right, yeah. or you know, be a, um, uh, uh, not insurmountable uh, 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 barrier or, you know, for them to, to get past, you know, we don't want to make it that it's like in order to advance on your opponent, you need to be able to just plow through and do the damage and destroy yeah. it. Um, or find the ladder to get up to it. So you may have noticed that on the um, uh, on the markers, all that we showed, sorry, that we showed in the fan appreciation. Yeah, that, right. Go yeah. back to that. Um, all the different uh, sides had uh, the, the transition square. Um, right, yeah. Uh, uh, mark, that marker, little marker, the yeah, little the one, two, yeah. So uh, that will represent that each of those will be considered transition squares right. so you'll be able to go up and down on them easier uh, but we're actually even doing a bigger shift on that of elevated terrain in general that you will be able to uh, elevated terrain will operate as old hindering terrain did where oh. you, okay if once you cross the line you have to stop okay. even if there's so if there's no so transition if square, there's a transition square you, you just, just, keep, you just going. keep going okay but if there is if my team's all flyers and my opponent all has boot symbol and they can't fly, they they're not like stuck struggling trying to like work their way around to yeah, the one transition just, square. You know, if I can just keep you from getting the ladder to get up there, yeah. then you, it's you still know, better to be a flyer. Yeah, right. But, There's no auto. But stop. like, yeah, yeah, but you're not just like stuck down there and I get to take free shots at you all day. You, yeah, that's that's a good change. That's interesting because that's a rule that like yeah. Now anyone can just hop up just to the ledge. Yeah. You know, and they're superheroes. That makes sense. It's kind of like the uh, the change me to light objects. Anyone can pick up a light object. They're yeah, superheroes. It's so. not quite parkour, but I mean, it's, it's, it's not, like yeah, what yeah, I yeah. would be able to do. It's a thinking yeah. up there, you know? Yeah. All right. Exactly. Wow, that is a really cool change, though. This, I know the object change is implemented in the Batman set. Is this probably going to follow along the same lines implemented in the Batman the, set? The, the chain, yeah, that, that will that? be with the, the, uh, the okay. uh, uh, Spider-Man Beyond Amazing oh, Spider set Beyond with Amazing. all the train. Okay. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Okay, I was curious about that. Cool. Wow. Man. This is a lot of info. This is uh, a lot of info. Yeah, of, like, my my brain, I already had some questions ready, but then I've gotten more. And it's just like, oh, man. And I got to process Yeah, and I'm sure stuff. everybody who's insane. watching at home, their brains are right. exploding. Yeah, it, it, right. it really does. It, it, adds, it adds, adds a lot of strategy to the game. Yeah. And as I said, not only during game setup, but during the game. Yeah. And we didn't even talk, really talk about, I mean, we hinted at it, but right. we really didn't talk about some of the PAC updates, too, that some of the PAC right. powers will be, in, be able Said to like, interact. Said, like, Quake will be able to start destroying they, they stuff. mentioned Quake, yeah. Yeah, really yeah. Cool. yeah so uh, Super Strength, Super Strength will be able to pick up uh, pick up terrain, right. and not just limited to objects. Um, Quake will allow you to destroy, ter uh, yeah. destroy terrain. And uh, telekinesis will allow you to move, move terrain around the map, and yeah. also uh, make ranged terrain actions as if you were right. as if you were holding them. That's okay. Cool. Okay. So yeah. know, the classic idea of yeah. you know, Jean Grey is gonna right. wither mine, yeah. throw something at you. Well, yeah. You'll Magneto. Be able to that. Magneto picking up that uh, container cart and right. throwing yeah, yeah. it at his That's enemies. Smart. That's definitely something that like we've seen. So that makes sense. That's. Um, Let's see, yeah, like TK. Would there be any changes to leap climb possibly? Would that be in like with the uh, change to like elevated, like you stop, like that? It doesn't like diminish the utility of leap right. climb. Right, leap climb already can just continue, but like, like a full yeah. movement. Would there be any other like possible changes outside of that, like energy explosion maybe, like to go along with quake? I don't know, like pulse wave, you know? Yeah, the the uh, pulse wave, you yeah. know the leap climb one is is uh, there's. Uh, with the movement of across the elevated terrain, that does kind of, you know, um, 
uh, step into the bounds of what Lee Klein can do and give in a little bit to everybody. So uh, in in the future, you know, we are looking at potentially changes there, but that doesn't necessarily uh, interact with the markers. Right. You know, it still just, has the it's, it's movement. Yeah, uh, it still has the improved movement. So yeah, it's it's still. I mean, it's still better than just stepping up there and stopping. Right. I mean, obviously, like you normally like you want like leap climb and charge or like you know you like want uh, to do something after you leap climb over that or you know who has leap climb and charge Simeon? John that? Walker, Captain America has leap climb. Wow. Sorry, I had to, I had to say it. I had to say it. Actually, his leap climb also heard he's got the jerk say. keyword. I heard <laughs> right. that's coming soon. To John yeah, 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 yeah. U.S. agent at least. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So continue. There's, Sorry, there's, I had to get that in there. there it, you know, we're very excited about this. It's it's. Um, really going to uh, change how players think about the game oh, yeah. build their team, you know, what what markers you're going to be adding to your yeah. force, uh, where you're going to place them, um, utilizing some of the, the PAC powers that you might not, you know, always think to have in your toolbox, no. um, but, you know, you might want to consider, you know, to... Uh, to have someone with super strength on there, if you need to, if you need to oh. move things around, or, you know. Or... Absolutely, like super strength. Like with this, like super strength went from like a, a power that I didn't normally want on my team to like, yeah, I want to pick stuff up and move it constantly. Right. Like, I think its utility has really went up. Like, it, was, yeah. it was benched for a while, so it was like, all right, well, we're not really using super strength right now. It's been unbenched, and still wasn't uh, the most used version of super strength. Not you know, used to be able to hypersonic and destroy people, which did not feel fun. In I really my like that uh, that Mary Marvel. No, don't mention Mary Marvel. She's <laughs> oh my gosh with an oh. ultra heavy. Um, great, but now great super memories. strength has I think changed more so than just like a dude's gonna hit you real hard. To now it's like just a huge utility like power more so than it's yeah. Even man. I mean obviously yeah. you know the big damage is sexy. Right? It's awesome. Like, oh to able, yeah, to be able to pick Absolutely. up like the everybody's like I'm gonna hit you for smash, seven. It's like yeah, whoa, yeah. you know, yeah. smash people with things. But even just the subtle aspect of I'm gonna pick up an elevated or blocking and, and yeah. put it down, uh, and 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 in in the middle of the game, as much as we don't want to uh, explain about the transition squares and right. not using those to prevent people from during game setup blocking choke points, right? But during game, that's a viable strategy. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. To to be able to to pick up, uh, you know, I mean, classy. You, you see it in the comics all the time. You know, Colossus is going to pick something up and put it in front of a doorway yeah. to stop the, you know, stop the yeah. Hellfire uh, Club from uh, coming in. You know, something like that. Like that. That is, uh, you know, I just described that. You yeah. can picture it in your head. You'll be able to yeah. do that in the hero quest map. The uh, the one common picture you guys used on the pre presentation was that iconic picture of Spider Man being trapped under uh, all this debris and rubble yes. and stuff, and the water's coming down on him. Uh, is there going to be a, or swinging a crater? Or yes, yeah. yeah. swinging a crater, which is so cool. Uh, is there going to be like a being like trapped under debris? You know, because like we do make debris markers now. It could be next to people. Is there a way like it's almost a plasticity type or a stop? Uh, yeah, I effect? mean, there certainly would be the potential with uh, with special effects on things, but you know, the train markers right. will be because um, I know someone asked me this question after the presentation. Uh, the flip side will have the debris. Right. Uh, so basically, you know, when it's. Uh, when you destroy something, you can't just destroy one square of a marker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all or nothing. Uh, and when you destroy it, you would flip it over, and now it's hindering the train on the map. Yeah. Uh, there is going to be another uh, sort of ancillary um, shift here that, that uh, as much as I say that you can uh, manipulate the terrain, um, there's uh, for uh, smoke, uh, debris, and okay. water, those will be have exceptions cut out to say that those aren't things that you can pick up. Oh, hit okay. They're not gotcha. going to have stats on okay. them because it doesn't make sense. Like, you can't pick up water and hit something. Yeah, right, you no. know? So, um, so those uh, those will have a cut out exception uh, where it says, and you know, specifically in Super Strength, will say except for smoke debris, sure. and water, and um, and as I said, they won't have any stats okay. on them uh, to be able to to communicate that uh, as well. Um, so, and that makes thematic sense. Yeah, it does. You know, yeah, like when something's that. destroyed, you're not going to be able to then yeah. use it again. It's, just, it it's dust on the ground. It's rubble. Exactly. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but it'll still count as that terrain type. Okay. Uh, so, the, yeah, there's, uh, it, it's, it's really exciting. I mean, it's really a cool. Lot of, there's I, a, lot uh, of move, you know, a, a lot of moving parts uh, and, and, and that adds a lot of strategy. But as I said, like, a con we started off, 
and a lot of people get a little nervous when it's like, uh-oh, another rules change coming along. But I, I think, you know, hopefully at, at, in explaining this, everything that I'm talking about is very familiar to, to people who have been playing fair Oh, yeah. It's, I'm not, uh, we're not using uh, terminology or mechanisms, yeah. or we are using terminology and mechanisms that are already established in the game yep. and that you're familiar with in the context of objects, but just expanding it yeah. to be with, used within terrain as a, you know, like one level up right. of, of terrain, so it's not just limited to objects. I, I, I agree. I think every change you guys have made, especially the uh, starting force objects equipped to a character, you've been doing that since literally objects have come out. You know, now you've just opened the doorway. You know, so I think this would be an easy shift for people to make. Not even really a shift. It's uh, it's more of a, a natural progression of things. I suppose I could say. I think it, for for established Heroclix players, yeah, the changes will be very intuitive. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. I'm, Samini, anything you want? I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad about. All of the, like all of the like the bomb drops that you gave us. Yeah, um, it is. It's, it is it's a lot. lot. It is. Um, no, I, I do want to just like sit here and workshop like all the like the like. Well, what if the shipping crate was like an oil tanker and it exploded when Ooh, you threw it? A like, rock saw yeah. oil tanker. Yeah. Oh yeah, Marvel yeah, Corporation yeah. Rock saw. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> what was the what was the chemical that got Matt Murdock sized? No, I just kidding. Chemical um, X. No, chem it's Carpuff Girls. Never mind. Keep going. Um, I do want to do that, but no, like uh. You, you are a busy man. It's this world. Yes. And you do have, like, things to do. So I don't want to keep you too much. I just want to... I want to close out with... Uh, a fun question, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do... A, what's like, what's uh, a fun question? What is... We've already asked you what your favorite figure was. But this oh, yes. is recorded. So if you want to say again <laughs> what your favorite figure is... Uh, it's um, hilarious. It's awesome. Yeah, my answer. I mean, I could probably come up with... Uh, with uh, my answer for that question earlier right. was Punisher Van. I will say... Uh, um, you know, one of the things that yeah, I'm very fortunate in being able to work with the Heroclix design development team, it's fun yeah. to be able to uh, you know, work on dial design, mechanic stuff, but also sometimes just, you know, the sculpts are beautiful. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so there's times where um, uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to work with the sculptors, you know, have yeah. an idea and uh, sort of cocktail napkin sketch yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and say like, hey, it would be really cool if and, uh, and, and sort of come up with a concept and then give it to them and then have them come back right. and, and, and see that, you know, like my crude drawing turned into reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's two really good examples of that that, uh, that I absolutely love. Um, one of them is um, the uh, Magneto Chase uh, that had the removable uh, metal Did, ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The X Men one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, was that, yeah. Uh, that was someone else's. Another uh, person's favorite figure. Favorite yeah. 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 So that that was one that uh, I was like, I have this concept for how he could like throw, uh, like destroy walls yeah. and then throw it. Yeah. And it would be like, oh, we were doing removables, and it would be like. Man, it would be really cool if he had these like chunks of metal, yeah. and, he, and then you could take them off. It was, yeah. It, you know, so that, that was, was so one. cool. That was like one of my favorite figures for a long, long time because just like part of his sculpt worked with the power that he had. Yeah, and it was just like such a cool like display of his power. Yes, the, yeah. the sculpt was beautiful. Yeah, exactly. When 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 it when it melts between the the game mechanic of the figure mm -hmm. is visually represented on the sculpt yeah. is like it is is you know the absolute coolest you know when you can you can see what the character does in game yeah. represented in the sculpt kind of like the i mean from the same set cuz you guys did that you, like you said you had removables from that same set you had the juggernaut where his helmet popped off when he took damage yes uh, like also yeah. like just yeah, as so far as like a thematic, Colossus, you can put yeah. Wolverine on Colossus, a little yeah, effect right. to throw him. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. as far as like thematic game battles go, like it doesn't get much better than like you know you've damaged yeah. Juggernaut and knocked his helmet off, and now he's lost like some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. The um, the other one that I'll mention is uh, back from the Justice League strategy game. The, oh, dark, the side dark side with the big coming bubble. Coming through the portal. Yeah, uh, was one that I. Uh, uh, we had uh, sort of perfected the idea of being able to put a uh, an image tampo on oh, a yeah. flat surface. Right. And you know the idea of the boom tube and yeah. Darkseid coming out. Yeah. And I was like, and I uh, went to the sculpting studio, and I was like, man, it would be really cool if like 
we can do dark side but it's like there's a portal behind it we've done like you know blink and and other yeah. character magic or what have you that have portals but i was like like it would be really cool if we could do something where it's like the portals behind them and there's a there's an image tampo on it yeah. that looks like it's like a window into yeah. into apocalypse you oh, know? Yeah. demons there yeah, ready to get out exactly yeah and and I I went with that, you know, I, I gave that concept and our sculptors ran with it. And it, this was one of the examples where it was like, what I thought would be cool, like they amped it up to 11 yeah. because yeah. it was like, they ended up, they were like, oh yeah, not only can we do that, we could have a parademon coming halfway through it. Yeah. And then dark side, like part of his leg is in it. So it's yeah. like he's stepping through. It was like, it was way beyond what I have ever even imagined yeah. of like, you know, I, I, I gave them the, 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 you know, I suggested the concept and they were like, oh yeah, I see, you know, they saw it in their head and they're like, yeah. not only can we do that, we can one up it, you know? Yeah. Like, That's so awesome. that, that was one of the coolest, uh, uh sculpts that we Sweet. were really proud to have, but, uh, uh, you know, a little. And then if you want to kind of throw out one more here, it doesn't have to be a sculpt or anything, but it can be just like anything you've ever worked on for Wiz Kids. Do you have like a favorite? I know it's tough to narrow down. Or a, a project that you're really passionate about, and then when you finally did, you're like, yes, you know, like a, a set or anything that you're really excited to find. Like you're like, oh, we're gonna do this storyline. Oh, finally, you know, or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I you know it's it, it it's hard to narrow it down, but um, right. but I mean, just over the uh, you know over the years, um, uh, I mean, I'm gonna give a, a generic answer instead okay, of a yeah. specific. Answer. That sounds good. Yeah, but uh, it's always exciting to. You know the game's been around for 20 years, right? Um, and uh, we have the combat dial system, and uh, since the advent of special powers and traits and things like that, um, trying to come up with new ways to utilize the dial and, okay, yeah. and, and mechanics that could can utilize the the, the combat dial uh, in uh, unique and creative ways. Uh, uh, and things that are different, and things that we haven't seen before. So, I'm always happy to uh, to be able to work on um, you know some mechanic like like a shifting focus or something oh, like sure. that. Where yeah. where um, uh, when we originally came up with that concept of we want to represent all the different aspects of a Batman, right? And a Superman, but yeah. not have to saddle them with a point cost yeah. where it's like they can do everything all at once yeah. but then it, it's like way too expensive to put on a team uh, so it's like can we have you know that, that mental challenge of can we make a low point Superman yeah. and still have him represent Superman and everything Superman can do um, and coming up with a mechanic that allows you to yeah. do the shifting focus and switch the characters so that and then of course that and that goes back to what we said of when the sculpt oh, visually yeah. represents what the character do so we so on that yeah you've got like the hypersonic had, one that's like kind of blurry fast, exactly yeah. Yeah. same with like the, the vision where there was like those the solid state right. vision the one that's like phasing clear. so he's like kind of clear exactly yeah so i think that adds a lot of flavor to uh, to the game and the character, where you can uh, you can you know pick your strategy, pick the one that yeah. you're, th that you're using, and and there's a visual difference yeah. in, in the sculpt. That Especially when they come in like halfway through a dial or near the end or something, is really really cool. And people love shifting focus. That's you know thank you. Yeah, it's so awesome. Yeah, especially when you really think about it, you guys have had the combat dial. That's the beginning of the game. That's the concept of the game. You know, Mage Knight, whatever it's even before hero clicks. So it's really cool that when you say your favorite thing to work on was trying to use that same base core of the game, but in unique ways. That is really awesome. Yeah, like just, yeah. you know, the mental challenge of, right. of what have we never done before? Yeah. You know, what, what, what would be cool to add to the game and how can we represent it in hero clicks? Yeah. I know like, a big favorite is like, uh, a vampire dial, right? Instead yes. of always starting on click one, it's like you heal up. It's, yeah, it's really cool. Just those, unique takes yeah vampire does ah, those go. are my absolute favorite like yeah one of my favorite things to play i mean i mean fear itself dracula one of my like top figures of awesome. all time like he's a little over costed he's a little old but like i still love busting him out with some perplex and some tk and stuff yeah. because yeah like 
once they get like all that blood in them, you know, they're just like crazy. They go like nuts. And uh, you guys have represented that for things other than vampires as well. Like, you know, um, like Parasite. Like he does, he's not a traditional vampire. He doesn't suck blood, but he like absorbs energy and powers and stuff. Yeah. And um, my new favorite might be this rogue. Sorry, I love this new rogue. Yeah, the rogue. Great. Yeah. Funny, funny story with the uh, vampire dials. Um, that was actually a concept that uh, I had thought of as a player way before I started oh, working okay. with WizKids. Uh, way back from the uh, Amazing Spider-Man set. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Amazing Spider-Man set. But like the first Morbius we got. Oh, sure. I remember playing at our local venues and of course we talked about, you know, clicks and like, and, and I was saying at that point, I was like, you know what would be really cool? Like, Morbius is a vampire. Like, it would be really cool if like, he like damaged people and like he could actually turn his dial like, oh, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we talked, you know, just sort of bandying it about just as a, you know, sort of, right. you know, hey, going back to fanfic, right? You know, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, like, like this would be <laughs> yeah. a cool concept. Yeah. And then, uh, and then when I started working with um, uh, the, uh, the, the Heroclix team, uh, even before I was a, a, an employee, um, I was like, hey, I had this concept a while back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, let's like, go. And, um, and, uh, and they were like, yeah, that sounds cool. You know, so, uh, so I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm, you know, inspiration awesome. for that, uh, um, that mechanic. And it's, and it's a mechanic that we've utilized over the years. Nice, nice. We do have a question. Because okay. we'd be, we'd be, you know, we'd never hear the end of it. This is from McConnell. Oh gosh, yeah. It's about an IP. Yeah. So I assume the answer is going to be like you can't say, but Naruto clicks oh, when. Jeez. So man. Naruto, <laughs> the, the anime. When when are the clicks coming? This comes for from it? two people that I don't think have seen it ever. I am. Yeah. Anyways, I, yeah. I've watched some of it, but like you know. McConnell, he he did specifically ask us. This. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's like, I mean, like, licensing is a funny thing, and I can't really you know get too too far right. into it. Uh, but certainly, I can see the the value in that uh, yeah and a lot of anime uh properties. if you look through the threads people are like yeah, everybody's have got fan versions and they're really, like this yeah. one's perfect the powers fit like you know the powers fit for a ton of stuff but like obviously it, it comes down to the ips and yeah. like anime i think anime is especially tricky because it's like it's not america centric so you have to like go there to get like the licensing There's and like, stuff like that base, though yeah and, yeah and, and even if uh you know uh mechanic wise i mean i think we could translated it to hero oh, clicks no doubt yeah, yeah. sure e e easily done um and, and uh but just you know how cool would the sculpts uh, be and, so, and, yeah. and and for yeah. folks who are fans even if they're not necessarily players to have uh, you know that collectible uh figure of their of their right. uh, favorite you know oh yeah i mean yeah. and like there's there's people in the community that do customs of like those figures oh yeah like they do custom sculpts and they look awesome and I mean, yeah, if they were like more accessible, like how much how much do those cost, Calder? As an I, owner, of... I buy a lot of them. Uh, those custom sculpts yeah. that one guy makes, he does about you know he does ten dollars, fifteen dollars an hour. So I usually end up spending about fifty, sixty bucks for a custom sculpt figure. Yeah, that's you know just the sculpt, but uh, they look so cool. You know, yeah, like, properties that I've never oh, seen here before. Like yeah, they're, they're really absolutely. neat. You know, it's so, like yeah, they're the price of like an older chase or a brand new super air but it's like yeah they're awesome though you know so well, you've got the only one but i've got the only one yeah, yeah yeah i've got the only thor ragnarok movie scourge ever made <laughs> i'm pretty pumped <laughs> about oh, it really? that's yeah cool. that's one of my favorite ones you ever did the, you know double m16s and stuff like, yeah let's that's, go i mean that's my favorite you know? like story like oh yeah growing up and reading comics yeah that was such a like mind-blowing moment right? oh it's of, so of good. like a, the the redemption arc of scourge yeah you know in, in that when he like, holds I the just, line yeah yeah, he holds the just, line, you know, like, yeah like sort of a you know not too exciting you know villain you just know, sort of sorry, like a dude that but, hangs but, out with enchantress yeah, i mean that's like, what that is what he was but yeah. i just remember reading that because i i collected Thor, you know back back in those days and my jaw just dropped yeah. you know, like how cool was that that this character i didn't care anything about just like yeah, did he, the coolest like the art's so good in those panels yeah too. It's, like, it's like, it, like yeah it, 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 yes absolutely like <laughs> simon said like like it, it is those couple of pages in that book is is like right up there with like high literature i mean like, like yeah like i mean the, yeah the, the, the art 
the 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 the, the captions, you know, the narration yeah. mm. uh, of of his sacrifice. Like I just remember, like it was almost like comics transcended to another level yeah. when I was reading that story. I tell and, I tell people all the time that like comics are, in my opinion, comics are one of like the last true like vestiges of art. Because like you can tell this like amazing story with these amazing colors and stuff. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff. I can't like say it's like the last thing, you know. But yeah. But like it truly is like this uh, medium that's so brand new and like stuff like that. It really like does just like it's like you know, it's awesome. Um, which I mean, we didn't even touch on it, but possible iconics. For that scourge, I would say, that's like, a pretty iconic. Well, that's a good call. Moment. You know, I haven't, I haven't thought about that, but yeah, I can see, I can yeah. see, uh, like a peanut base with like you know the horde yeah. on one oh, side, geez. and you know, oh my gosh. But yeah, we um, did get a pretty awesome last laugh scourge in that. Uh, the Mighty oh yeah, the last scourge. laugh. Oh yeah, that was, that was uh, cool. yeah, that was when when we put that one in that set. I was like, you know, we got it. We got to do some mechanic that, yeah. that represents him doing his last thing, and it's and it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it works so well, and it, it is like a, still an s- extremely fun piece to play, and it's yeah. hard to deal with. Like it's oh, hard yeah. to deal with even today. Right. Like um, that was my first uh, top eight at WKO. I played that series. Oh, that, yeah. I played him in the boxing ring. It was like, oh, well, yeah, minus yeah, two. Come, so come in here, but yeah, it was <laughs> pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're a busy guy. Maybe we yeah, go. but I also want to talk about iconics now that we're like on the subject. How excited are you? be able to show off these really high quality specific products where people can just be like oh well, don't mind if i do and they grab it yeah i mean so so many people uh come you know we have, we love the game we love playing hero clicks yeah the sculpts are awesome too yeah and there's uh, there's a lot of people out there who collect hero clicks you know and and don't necessarily play they like the figures they like to display them it's a it's a way to you know show a bit of yourself and your interest and your inner geek to other people easily i mean like if you work in an office setting you know you might not necessarily have a you know McFarland statue on your you know space for right. some big statue yeah. on your desk but you can stick a little hero clicks on your uh, on your monitor yeah. or what have you i mean i do have like a foom yeah so i'm like it's back. <laughs> you might not have a big one but i got but i like the big ones too yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. True, yeah. But, yeah. and uh and and this is certainly an opportunity to really take, you know, as the name states, the iconic imagery. Yeah. You know, right. when you think of a of a character, um, you know, Iron Man and his Hall of Armor. I love that. Oh. And uh, you know, all these different examples of, of just these these iconic images of characters, and saying, well, let's put that into a uh, into a, a sculpt, uh, into a Heroclix figure. But not be constrained by the booster pack, right? Right, because yeah, that that is like a thought that has to go into it. Like, I would love to have this like really massive, like you know, kind of effect on this person. But how likely is that to like survive shipping in yeah, a booster, exactly, exactly. or like you know, like um, like the Captain America Modok. You know, like how how, oh, how heavy right. is it going to be they in a booster? Do. You know, that's what that's another factor this? too. Yeah, it's a it's yeah. a collectible game. You you know, it's a, they're buying packs. Like yeah. anything that's really heavy sort of throws that on up. So yeah. that's a, that's wow, a, what could that's possibly be in this booster? Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh man, especially um, because as soon as I saw uh, Superman and Doomsday, which is awesome right away, that is truly an iconic moment. Superman fighting Doomsday. Well, and then they they kill each other. Last know? night we saw the. The aftermath, the the death of Superman right, with like you know yeah, Steel yeah, and Eradicator, yeah, yeah. Superman, yeah, really cool comic. Um, and all these people that are like, "Whoa, Superman is alive!" It's like, ah, "Are you sure about that?" You know. <laughs> um, but the Superman Doomsday is very much a Captain America Iron Man from Civil War. Sure, the, yeah, yeah, the putting the two on. sculpts next to each oh, other. Oh yeah, I really love that. Coming I was gonna back say, too. yeah, it does feel uh, like that was the, the first iconic. Was like yeah, that LE yeah. set where. Like you couldn't just own one; you had to have like the two, so yeah. that, like you could yeah. do the pose. That was, that was another cocktail napkin sketch. So like, yeah. Can we do this? Oh yeah, dude, it is so, <laughs> so cool. good. And, yeah, so I'm really excited. And you guys are having fun with it too. That's what I really love. Yeah, is you guys are doing a lot of uh, popular like, memes and stuff. Like, when I saw, oh yeah, other, the, yeah, the, the, you know, the meme stuff is, is amazing. Yeah, yeah, when I, I saw the the tarot yeah. card of Wolverine pining over G, yeah. with the, I was like, yes. But then when no. you, I saw the two by two. Or the, the yeah, peanut the base. Peanut base is so I was perfect. like, oh, so like, oh. it's. 
I don't know what it's gonna do. I can't imagine what it's possibly gonna do. Be sad but it doesn't Wolverine, matter. Man. Yeah, like, it doesn't so matter. Funny. I'm gonna like, put it on my shelf. Like uh, either way, like I'm gonna have at least two. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you have at least two? one to play and one. To yeah, play. yeah. Oh, I can't. Sure, sure, I can't sure. have one that's not in mint. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Not a we monster. Just, there we, are. we just came up with a tagline: one to play and one to what display. Is play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, truly, like that is. As sad as it sounds, like that's how my tarot cards. I brought uh, a set of like all the modern tarot cards because um, I have two of each. One for like play, yeah. and one that I'm gonna like put in like a shadow box. That I just think all the art is like awesome on them. Yeah, the art is amazing. But uh, that is now that I think about it, that is how I collect, and that's kind of unhealthy, probably. Yeah, <laughs> like I do. Accounts, I like, do really? buy like a this lot of like two. Like, 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 yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this one's too cool. What if I accidentally damage it? Shell. And then Whoops. my cat's like, well, what if I just smack? But, uh, yes. So we've said it before. <laughs> You're busy, guy. No, I'm, ha- I'm happy to talk. I mean, well, here. We're happy to be here at Graceland. Yes. Things are going so yes. well, I can sit and chat with you guys. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's been I, a fun I mean, day. Yeah. It's been a fun day. It's been it's a fun day, yes. and tomorrow's a short day. Yes. But yeah. it is probably one of the more important days i think yesterday is the most important to me the team sealed is yeah, awesome the fan awesome. appreciation is awesome i mean everything that's going on like i guess you know dice masters nationals was yesterday so today's their most important day but yesterday's pretty important to them too so everything going on is kind of important day oh yeah i mean in its own way yeah we've uh we've actually mentioned the, the side events and i forgot to mention this earlier but the slot the all three months at once where did that idea kind of come from because it's like oh yeah i don't normally have a home venue or maybe can't make this some months like yeah, being able here, to get through we're gonna run you through all three of them like that's really cool you just you just, you just explain the rationale perfect okay right yeah, yeah okay absolutely right. you know for for folks that and and also you know i mean Everybody who's here, they're obviously yeah. in, in, invested and want to be able to collect the set. So it's another sort of pull at the pump to be able to open some packs and get the figures that you might not have gotten in your home venue. Okay, awesome, nice. Yeah, I know I missed like the first. Well, I have three venues because I'm pretty lucky, but um, I missed the first month at two of them because I've just been busy lately. But uh, I know like that was like going into like uh, or like when I saw uh, the list of events that you were doing at nationals I was like oh that's what I would be I was like I wouldn't even care about like playing in like the main event like that's a really cool event and uh, you guys had like several of them there you had one every day here yep. um, yeah like going forward like that's a really awesome way to get that product out I know and this is off topic but a few years back you guys um you like cut the restriction and allowed people to sell like slop like only bricks that were from previous like age of ultron and fear itself and stuff like that you oh, yeah. allowed so like stores to sell that is that something like going forward like at a certain point uh the month one two and three bricks will be for sale uh potentially i mean it all depends on uh on what we have uh in stock and in inventory um you, the the uh the steps generally would be that we run the event uh, if there's more available, uh, then we would allow retailers to run it again, you know, to make it available. Obviously, so the that... goal is to bring players in and have them play at, like, local stores and stuff. Right. Yeah. That's, like, a big push. That's why you don't want them to just be able to sell it. But but after a certain time period, um, you know, we have a, a licensing agreement with our retail partners that, uh, that they're to be used for organized play, uh, not just to be put on the shelf and sold. But after a certain window of time, you know, uh, especially not only for people who want to uh, actually go purchase it, but for stores that might have some product uh, still available or, you know, in their inventory to have to provide them with a means that they can then just turn around and and put on the shelf and and sell it. But we just want to give that window of time that it's not uh, affecting the uh, running of the event itself. Um, And... It also just, you know, only if uh, there's still uh, product available for right. at uh, stores. A lot of times, you know, we don't, we don't have, there's no more left for people, for the stores to purchase yeah. more, but it's more just to say, okay, if you have any in your back room, right. now you can just, now you can just sell it. And, sure. and we're not going to, you know, say, hey, you're not right. using it for organized play. Right. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, uh, I can like uh, try something. 
right? Like, you want to try Sentinel three months later. Oh, yeah, you saw. You know, you get like, the winner, you got the exclusivity of it. That is really cool. I, uh, it's so easy because I want to scratch your brain, more pick your brain, more about like everything. You know, it's, there's forbidden knowledge or something. <laughs> the aura here is amazing. Uh, Future Foundation was one of the coolest sets that you guys have released. When at that time, I was like, wow, it's really cool. Doom Chase is everything. But it also brought about two like totally new things. That was like, mission points, that was legacy cards. Yes. And yes. what's so we're big mission point guys. Yes. We love we love yeah. mission points. We've been we team idea. mission points since I've day one. At least one mission point win. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he came so, up uh, and I think Brandon, Brandon yeah, Bernie got one. Yeah. Him, and that was really cool. Uh, again, I super respect him. We were the first two people. Little we'll brag here. We were the first two people in an official ish events or a big events. Uh, last year that had gotten mission point victories it was just 400 i think silver or something but i did take home two mission point victories before anybody else had to say all right guess. but anyways <laughs> it uh, can what, be done. Uh, it can yeah be it done. can be done and it's and it's so fun uh and i i love the idea of just the wrecking crew going to town destroying everything and then they win you know uh ultron the age of ultron's upon you he's in your starting area he's fully made it what uh what spawned the idea of mission points and then Kind of, uh, how have you been able to keep them so thematic? Because they really are thematic. I think one of my favorites is like the the most recent one, uh, that Kate Pride, like yes. the rescuing yeah. them. Oh, like yeah. that was like Australian I was like Indians. that like truly is because some of them it's like yeah like that it makes sense like it's like an alternate mission kind of thing. But this one's like truly like rescuing people. Yeah, and like that's like the task. You know, if you rescue all the people, then like you can bail and like you won. Like you don't yeah. have to really like engage. Yeah, if people. If, I mean, and for those of you who are, you know, play scenario games at home yeah. or local venues, um, you know, I'm sure people have come up with on their own. You know, Heroclix is a is an infinitely uh, uh, customizable game. Absolutely. You, know, you come up with your own uh, rules and scenarios yeah. and builds. And, Some weirdos know. did one where they like yeah. hit each other with chairs and uh, yeah. threw boots at each other. Very strange. Very strange. Yeah. I was more token on the map. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but. Um, this, uh, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people who do custom scenarios, they, you know, you come up with, it's not necessarily a new idea, but like the sort of, uh, and even in video games and other games, there's these where it's like, you've got to protect the innocent bystander, you know, and get yeah. them safely across the map. Right. Uh, and, uh, and so that's, you know, a very similar sort of concept in a game, but giving you a, a, a real reason to do it and not just, you know, beat your opponent over the head. Right. Um, and that's, that's really where, where mission points come from from is, yeah. is that um, the game of hero clicks is always traditionally be you know I just want to beat the opponent right over the yeah. head you know and uh, and in a lot of other games I mean we're probably only one of the you know few games for a longer period of time where that was the only path to victory yeah so uh, so we wanted to expand it because it, again just like we were talking about side events here you know uh, having something for everybody yeah um, and uh, providing another path to victory um, that's a little different, uh, and and again, and, and not only thematically, but um, it kind of disrupts your opponent that oh, you're, yeah. you're doing yeah, something. Yeah. You know, like they're building their team to be, you know, absorb damage, be defensive, you know, what have you, uh, going against the traditional strategies. Yeah. But if but if they're you know uh, protected against this, you know, and you go, okay, well, I, my strategy is over here. Yeah, and. Completely you know, you're like not, you're messes not. with their momentum and yeah, their exactly. You know, cool. they might have yeah, they might have plans against you know like the big heavy hitters coming in first, but uh, yeah, if uh, you know you start going for mission points and they don't have a plan for that and they have to adapt on the fly, it gives you an edge. Exactly. Especially you know if they don't like if they like a, if Wrecker like comes in and he starts like destroying walls all of a sudden, yeah, and all of a sudden he's got like seven or eight mission points by like turn three. And they're just like, oh, I have to get over there. Yeah, like, I got to deal with that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, it's like they've already committed one direction, yeah. and it's like, okay, you know, uh, you know, you got your sacrificial lambs we, over yeah. here. We Wreckers do need the, uh, the antithesis yes. to the wrecking crew, though, which is damage control. They're like, they come yeah. and sweep yeah. up all of the things he did and get doing, mission points. The, uh, look for damage control. The board game. The board game. Oh, yeah. oh that's yeah. right. Games, yeah, which yeah. Is, uh, which is uh, great fun. It'll be a. Uh, a game where you uh, randomly put cards out on the uh, on on the uh, uh, play field, and they're going to be overlapping, so you can only take the ones on top. But it's going to be all different, uh, you know, iconic equipment and stuff like that that you're digging out of the rubble, and then be able to use the effects of. So that'll be a fun game. It's a Little great side plug there. Yeah, so, you know, nice great so comic book yes. line though. Like, yes, classic I mean, 80s. Uh, yeah, 80s yeah, yeah, they were awesome. 
Hey, check out some of those WizKids board games. I mean, I yes. did a live stream of uh, Marvel Betrayal, Remix. Rob Remix, coming out uh, soon. Yeah. Um, Age of Heroes. Age of Heroes. Uh, rock, Paper Heroes. Rock, Paper Heroes. That one looked really interesting, the, uh, the Marvel game where it's like rock, paper, scissors, hand motions and stuff. Yeah, that it's always really made fun to make hand gestures at friends. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the, the concept of the game yeah. is, uh, is a positional uh, strategy game, but you, uh, you have cards that have different uh, hand gestures. So it's kind of uh, where you do rock, paper, scissors, but you come up with whatever hand gesture is on a card in front of you, and then sure. that gives you a special effect. Uh, you know, if I pointed at you, uh, you know, you pointed yeah. at me, you know, so my my effect would happen to you, your effect would happen to me, you know. Oh, like that, all right. You know, that okay. sort of thing. I yeah. tried to uh, talk Jimmy and the Dice Masters guys into uh, combining it with Smash City because like, oh, you had those huge oh, right, right, right. Dice, yeah, that's true. And I was like, what if you just like, you know, you like you get a certain like amount of dice on like one card and you're just going to start pelting your opponent with these like foam dice. Like, oh, that <laughs> seems like a good idea. They're all dice. Like, you know, it's we're all, all friends here. We're yeah. Paper Spanish. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, we did play Betrayal. Uh, the classic, what? That's pretty cool. What was it called? Resource the classic uh, trading, resource trading game. Exactly what it, exactly but, uh, it is, but yeah, it was pretty fun. The turns on that were like super fast. Like once oh, we yeah, like yeah. started playing it and got like the hang of it, we got we just, like it's like yeah, a twenty minute out. turn with three people, I guess. But yeah. probably more with the actual like six people. But yeah, um, that is <laughs> yeah. WizKids has plenty of stuff. Yeah, just, plenty yeah, of uh, board here, games. Here, yeah. Here, well, and I mean, yeah. Uh, the listeners like yeah, we know, okay, but we're here for this. Like, oh, but come on, check it out. You listen <laughs> to me talk given about them enough red meat. On yeah. That's Netflix. right. <laughs> you listen to me talk about bowling for ten minutes yeah. one time. You can you can stomach this for a little yeah. bit. I will say uh, one of my favorite things you guys ever did was a Team Fortress Two chess set. That was oh, huge. Yeah. I was wow. a huge okay. TF Two. I know an old, an old one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I was a huge Team Fortress Two fan, and then all the chess pieces you could Mitchum Max, yeah. like you whatever. Take the, swap yeah, the heads exactly. Off, so. And yeah. also like that hat in game. I still have. It's like seventy dollar in game hat now. It's like the TF Two economy is going great. You know, it's so cool. <laughs> so like, yeah, that was that was one of my all time favorites, and they looked so cool. They yeah, were so they're pretty. Really and the awesome. box had such cool uh, like wording on it. it the rules it says it explains how to play chess, but it's like it's so not how you play chess at all right. on the box. <laughs> yeah, that was. It's that like was I don't know how the horse piece works. So you just put that in your pocket, then you throw soup at your opponent, and then it's like what? Let me get my it's, phone it's out real most, quick and like, uh, look up how much time Calder spent playing T. Yeah, we don't. We don't need to. We don't need to look. <laughs> I wonder. Where, I wonder if it's played. changed since I sang a song about it, how many hours it has, you spent. It has went up substantially since uh, last year, but that's okay. That's fine. But no, seriously, you guys have made some really cool stuff. Not. Books that I just yeah. absolutely love Kibble Scuffle. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the winner of really the winner of Kibble that. Scuffle yeah. in Worlds 2019. I'm tired, tired of Kibble Scuffle. Oh, why? Right, right, right. Because there's the one other guy also. Oh, that that's right. Cats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cats are awesome. Obviously. Anyways, uh, I pseudo was like mission points, but also legacy cards. I do want to talk. Oh about yeah, you said right. That. Yeah, because that's a really cool thing. People lost their minds when they saw legacy cards because they're so cool and so awesome. You revitalized collections with that so oh, yeah i mean we, and you've we, added an infinite like there's like this like infinite like uh amount of like collectability now because like i look at my collection of stuff that i don't really play as often but like i don't really shelf and i'm like but what if yeah yeah one true, day true. like you know just maybe uh, a big tony will get a oh, legacy geez. card and like my yeah. 12 big tonys will pay off uh goodness. legacy cards was um uh Initially, as a celebration of 20 years of Hero Clicks, right? Yeah, to yeah. be able to do some callbacks um, and and uh, and and celebrate those 20 years of, of, of looking back at some of the real memorable uh, figures that we made over the years. Either you know we have a couple different criteria. You know maybe the just you know it really made a splash in the game. Yeah. You know the whatever the effect yeah. of the figure was. Uh, yeah, we really saw that with the uh, you know, beautiful sculpt, Fire Lord and like Mole Man and uh... right, and then the Fire Lord pseudo acts like how people played him back then. Which right, exactly. really cool. yeah, yeah. yeah. The, so those we, are yeah, great there's callbacks. A, there's yeah. a lot of uh, there's a lot of fun in the in the dial design and the uh, well, sorry, I shouldn't say dial design because you can't touch the dial, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. the um, uh, the the effects on the characters right. to kind of do almost uh, you know tongue in cheek Easter eggs and yeah. like. Yeah. Like old rules 
rules, you know, right, yeah. um, and uh, and and why they they made such a splash in the meta and kind of revisit it uh, and, and modernize it. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, like we, we also you know kind of want to reward players and collectors who have had right, yeah. these figures for so long and have been around in the game long enough to. Uh, have these figures and you know bought them in the past when they first right. came out. So uh, so it's really been exciting to kind of go back and go like you know every set. Um, uh, it you know it was one of these things that we, we we wanted to do as I said as a as a celebration of 28th anniversary. But it's been so beloved by uh, everybody that we're continuing on with awesome. them. So it's very exciting for us to go like every. Every time a new set comes out, like, okay, you know, thematically, what are the uh, figures from previous sets yeah. that would make sense as legacy cards in, in this set, and who do we want to update? There's other, also another aspect for us where, uh, you know, there's always, a, there's always a tough choice when uh, you're just, uh, looking at what the next Heroclix set is and what the set list is going to be, what the characters are going to be in it. And sometimes you have to make some cuts and choices, you know, of like, oh, we can't put, you know, we we maybe can't do this figure in this, this, this character in this yeah. set. But legacy cards do give us an opportunity where it's if it's if it's a character we've done before, and we want to fill out a, a theme team that's got representation in the set. Yeah, we can throw in a legacy card that that allows that pull that character from the past yeah, right, to be right. able to fill out that that theme. That's it. That representing the set. Yeah. Do you have a, a favorite legacy figure that you guys have done so far? Ones like maybe a, you're like, oh, so nostalgic. I get to play this piece again, or you know, um, anything. Let's see. I would say, um, you know, I I very much enjoy seeing Infinity Challenge Thanos on the game oh. table. Man. And I know, yeah. I know that's probably a little bit of a controversial. It statement. is. I just yeah. overheard that. I want to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with that opinion. Uh, <laughs> well, well, here's why. Though. But from here's the standpoint of he's a 20 year old figure that is like got the gumption to like make it in today's meta. Like that's that is crazy. And he's better than he was then. Oh, <laughs> way better. Oh my gosh, crazy. Like, like way better. Yeah, exactly. So, so like. It's, it's such a, uh, you know, I remember trying to make that figure work <laughs> back in the days and losing horribly. And it's the fact that he is, has, has this redemption, yes. you know, to be able to yeah. come back after finally, 20 after years. all these years. Yeah, yeah. That he's, he's finally got the respect he deserves. Yeah. And it's cool because it's, it's the like first Thanos that was ever done. Yeah, yeah, and it's Thanos too. So it's like I really can't even get mad losing the thing because it's Thanos. Right. You know right. what I mean? He should be powerful. Exactly. He should take yeah. almost the whole force to like beat, you know, and try to get him down. Yeah. Like, and, it's and, awesome. And if you look at his actual dial, it was a little disappointed back in the day. That, yeah. Okay, so Thanos' special power is that he just has a lot of damage reducers. Yeah, he just yeah. reduces damage. <laughs> like, because there was no cool. opportunity to do special powers back yeah. then to really represent, you know, the gauntlet or even what he does. Yeah. So, you know, Legacy Cards does allow us to, to pull characters from the pre-carded era yeah. and give them special effects. Are those your favorite ones to, to use? Pre-carded, not like uh, the non-Oreo era or just like characters that had cards yeah, I, or whatever but like i think i think from a creative uh uh perspective um for design right it's really cool to go back to the to the pre-carded uh, yeah. uh figures and it's a completely open slate of what you want to do i mean right when we do characters that have had cards and have had special powers there's a tendency to want to kind of like go, oh, well, we put him on the list because he was really cool back then. Like right. His effect was really cool. He did that thing. You so. know, his or her effect was right. really cool. So we want to like just update it. Sure. Whereas like when you got carte blanche, of, right. there was no special power, no traits back then. You're essentially um, making a new version. A new figure, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I mean, that, that Thanos, like, like you said, he was... 
inborn and toughness, which I mean, back then, like, sure, high defense, high stats, but like, essentially just invulnerability was hard to deal with back yeah. then. No joke, yeah. but, and, but the, and the dial, like, yeah, uh, you, like with a clean slate, like you can, you basically designed like a, a brand new Thanos that had never been in the game before. I mean, not basically, you did. You you designed a, yeah. a Thanos that had never been in the game before with like with that uh, whole like gauntlet trait. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's. The reason I really think it's cool when you guys do characters that have already had cards before is because then you're like, well, they have a special power. How do we make it different from back oh, then? Oh, yeah. If and it's you've a, done that really yeah. well so far, and I've really enjoyed yeah. stuff like the that. The special powers really just getting, like, slight revamps, like Fabian Cortez. Oh, yeah. Adding the mission it's points really and, uh, like, yeah. switching, like, what he did just a little bit. And like, it's still accurate. He still yeah. boosts you up. He'll still overload you, hurt you, but it's mission points. It's really cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So... No, we've, we've super enjoyed it. I think everybody can all agree they've super enjoyed Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing with that. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know that we anticipated how beloved and embraced it was going yeah. to be by the players. I mean, we figured that would you know it would be a fun thing to do uh, to say, hey, 20 years, let's look at some of the, uh, you know, right. let's let's do a little, you know, jump back in the way back machine, you know, and, and, and see what we've done in the past. Um, but uh, but now I, I I'm looking forward to just continuing yeah. forward, you know. Yeah, absolutely. How do you how do you feel about people? We do this a lot. We do this on our podcast and in our Discord. We have a lot of discussion. We take bets on what's going to get a legacy card figure. Yeah. We go out. We buy them. We sure. Yeah, yeah. How do you Hero feel about people bets. trying to be like uh, trying to I don't know. Yeah, there's only you know, figure out what you're thinking. Right all sure, this speculation, sure. you know. Yeah, it's for, like hmm, Avengers Forever. Well, that's like a. A storyline that involves these characters, so maybe you know? like yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love seeing those discussions online. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's choices, and you know, kind of going like. I will oh, say, well, we'll one see. of my bets. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a little disappointed because I'm well, I'm disappointed and not because one of my bets for uh, Spider-Man or like just a set in the future was Bombastic Bagman. Like, <laughs> whenever I was buying figures, if I needed just a little bit more to like bump me up to like the free shipping kind of, I was like. And a bombastic bag man, because maybe yeah. cart filler. And like now, like he's he's getting recreated. So I'm like, my my hopes are a little diminished. But I'm just glad that he's back in the game. That was like one of my favorite powers, cool. where it was like, please, please try and hit me. Like you know, do it. Like take, uh, I want to take damage. Kick me. Kick yeah, me. go kick yeah. me. Sorry. Yes, as as the power says. Yes. <laughs> uh, but no. Also, just like such a fun, goofy sculpt. Like yeah, yeah, the sculpt yeah, is great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But. Um, yeah, that was one of my big ones. Uh, like we, we do enjoy because it's. I mean, it's like such an open field. You have, you have so twenty fun. years of stuff to pull yeah, from. Yeah, so many. Yeah, and uh, literally millions of things. Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's got to be Even hard to like. It's yeah. got to be hard to like. Hundreds of thousands. Weed for it sure. Out. Thousands, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah like, of individual characters and yeah. figures and dials that we've worked with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My my advice to anyone has always been like, well, if you like a certain character. Buy all of that character. That may be a little overzealous, but I guaranteed that I had the, you know, rookie Captain America. You That's know, true. I, yeah. You know, when it's an well, RED, you you, you it's like, whoa. You don't go for the shotgun approach and just try to, cut, you know, get some of them. Oh, uh, well, when it's Captain, just go all in when it's Captain say, America, I will buy every, every, every single thing. Yeah. Uh, but for some of those, I have. So, like, right now, I've, you know, for a character you love, right? Like, I bought every Mr. Fee freeze in, like, Anticipation for the Batman Oh, I thought set. you were saying for speculating on legacy. Cards. Oh, for guessing. legacy cards too. For legacy make, cards too. You make your guess and you buy them all. <laughs> yeah, make a guess. Yeah. Buy buy every single one. I don't know how many cat women I need, but I got them and I'm ready. <laughs> oh, and I, if they yeah. don't make her, they'll be like, "Well, cool guys." No, I'm just kidding. But uh, no, it's super fun. Like Sim and I, we just I did specifically just buy the ones we specifically said last podcast. Yeah, two or three podcasts. We ago. we did one. Yeah. We did like we sat down and we were like. Here's our like list, like you know, yeah. Make sure like, well, like we were just making sure that like it was like said out loud so that we could either be right or wrong, right or but wrong. like for sure we, we would know. We made some calls though that you have been. You can right. do a scorecard between you guys. We, sh- we should. We should. Yeah. We See how like yeah the over yeah, under yeah, yeah. on who's gonna win. All right. All right. Bets right on now, bets. It's, yeah. Your your biggest crazy one was like Condiment King. It was like your wildest yeah. one for Batman. My wildest one, would, I don't know, Etrigan maybe was pretty out was there. Was that the Flash Etrigan? Yeah, the Flash yeah, Etrigan. The one that's really cool. The, you know what yeah. I mean? So I'm trying to like look at Scott's face and he's giving me it, out there. And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know. Is uh, that the Etrigan that. He switches the, dials. Yeah, he's got the two different. Uh, but was it on one dial? Or? It's all on one dial. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, the one yeah, from yeah, World's yeah. Finest has uh, him and Jason, which I obviously yeah. don't Oh, that's give. A, that was the one the I was Jason Blood. 
Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. If this somehow ends, it's been a pleasure talking to you, yeah, Scott. Absolutely. Else, great. Trying to be right back, but sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, no worries. But no, um, on the like on the aspect of legacy cards, I think like as players and collectors, everybody's on board with them. Obviously, there's a lot of like, oh, like I sold that figure like back then. But then there's also people that you know dig through their box and they find that like new treasure. So it's awesome that like that's like a playability. I know in my my local group, people are so happy to see that stuff that they're like, I wish they would just release like a full pack of them. I'm like, well, it's kind of like an incentive thing. Plus, like, I don't know how much, like, the design team wants to, like, go through, like, 50 characters at one time to, like, yeah, release a I, pack. I, but... Yeah, it, it, exactly. I mean, you said, um, yes, it's an incentive thing to, to have a limited number and uh, that we put out on the, um, as a brick, brick topper, we call it. Um, but, you know, it's kind of easy to say, like, oh, just make a legacy card for every figure that we ever made but there still is design and play testing and so there's there's time uh, uh, commitment to uh, to creating and developing yeah. and play testing and making sure that you know the game isn't degenerative you know by yeah just, you can't just you know, like slap throwing it, a lot of stuff in like, there in here's there. one new trait go get like you know also like people would complain if if it was just like simple stuff and like, oh, there's, yeah, there's it, characters back in modern, people wouldn't we, like that either. So, having a limited number per set means that we could put the love into them and make sure, like, yeah, they're worth the legacy, you know, like, like, like it's it, there's a there's uh, you know, the, the, the legacy cards are more exciting. Um, whereas if we just did a ton of legacy cards, you know, invariably there'd be some that it just it watered down. But, you're yeah, right. Some just wouldn't be as exciting, and then it just wouldn't be something that would be as exciting to collect as a whole. When, like, so. from the REV set, it's like, you pick the one that's, like, you know, like, the rookie, veteran, like, experienced, whichever. You pick, like, maybe, like, the one that, like, was saw the most play back in the day, or whatever. But, like, if you got all three of them, it's a, it'd be, you know, kind of redundant at a certain point. It'd be like, well, sure, you know, like, we, we redid them, but, like... No one's like gonna like want to collect all three just on the off chance kind of thing. So, yeah, it doesn't make sense to do like full sets. I know some people have said like you guys should just like take the infinity set and just legacy every figure in it. I'm like, well, it makes sense in like a collector's mind because like that'd just be really cool. But as like a company, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You know, if you guys were to like uh, try and do that, it's just a huge undertaking. And like you said. You can't put as much passion and as much like effort into like us like that many as opposed to just a few. But um, I guess like one of the things that I've always thought of with legacy cards is at certain points um, we stopped going from like just characters and stuff. And like obviously legacy cards are throughout from like the first to like we have you know sets that just rotated. But like along the way there was you know. There was two by twos. There was like winnables. There was uh, like special equipments. There was like resources. Um, have you guys thought about? And I'm I don't know if you're allowed to say, but like, have you guys thought like, is there a limit to what you want legacy card? Like, um, one of my favorites is the Colossal Serpent, but it's a prize figure, a grand prize figure. Yeah, and, and that, so, that is an aspect of the choice to, of what is uh, reasonably accessible. Right. Um, and uh, we produced in, a, in an amount uh, that, uh, and, and made available in an amount. So, you know, we've, we've had some legacy cards that have been some higher rarity things, but we, I think the real sweet spot is when it's in the, you know, common, uncommon, rare, uh, 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 rarities, so that there's enough of them out there. Because, I mean, let's be frank, you know, not all of them, survive uh, yeah. in the years you know no, like, like if, you know if that leech um from x of swords if he was like a a chase that like he would have like he would have been impossible to get yeah. like for most people but he's an uncommon so but I, yeah like um i just i was just asking about like you know like when it comes to rarities because like i'm a huge fan of the serpent but like 
I gave, I didn't ever like have any faith in the serpent because it's a grand prize figure. Like how many out there are out there? Like it's a shelf piece for a lot of people that have it, but how many would actually well, be out chariot. there? Not that I can really speak to what can yeah, be, can't one, be made, yeah, but that's one, I, that's one yeah. that sort of, you know, we broke the mold on yeah. in terms of what, you know, the, the, the sort of bar- boundaries we set for ourselves because it was so iconic. That is, was so right? Is, well, that was the first. That was a purchase uh, of a lot. You know. First NECA made figure, right? I think when Whiskey's yes. and NECA. Yeah, yeah. It's like, that's a super iconic one to do. Yes. So I, I understand. Yeah, breaking yeah, the mold that, on that one yeah, for sure. Sorry. Hero Clicks came back from the hiatus. That was yeah. The first, yeah. My, um personal favorite because this was floating around realms and the internet and everything was there's that picture of just a card you guys handed out these cards that just had the names of special powers on them around that time and it was the captain america one which is the uh, shield deflection trajectory card that was one of the first ones they saw and there was the buzz where it's like what does that mean like that's captain america for sure you know and that was like one of the first cards people saw and i was like here it puts it back it's you know it's and that was really cool so hammer thor legacy card right i'm just saying yeah (laughs) hammer thor captain america is one of the best but yeah but no, seriously, I think doing iconic things like that are just the way to go when it comes to like legacy card. Especially like we mentioned removables super earlier in this episode, but like the Invisible Woman, the Human Torch, you know, oh, like yeah. big removable Nova Flame. Yeah, uh, nice. They're so yeah, cool. Monkey Joe, yeah. Wolverine, and the uh, yeah, the tank. Wolverine, oh, Captain the Ice, Wolverine and the Tank. Those are my favorite. Oh, and again, that goes back to us talking about the different ways to use the dial. Countdown points were also a super cool mechanic. You know, yeah. that have been kind of used more recently and more so like that Secret Wars battle with Spider Man. Yeah, we bring those out every once Pseudo, in a while. yeah. Sure. Which would yeah. be really fun. I mean, that uh, the organized play Wolverine that can be clicked past his dial and then like oh, slowly yeah, yeah. heals back, back up. To yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think he's kind of like nuts because like he's so hard to like get rid of. But uh, yeah, yeah. That Weapon X removable that's one of my favorites i finally got one because i was like that's another thing is it's awesome man. there's figures that have been on like my want list as like just like a shelf piece for so long and now that legacy cards are out there i'm like well, i have to get them now because if they, they get, get your a, button gear if it right? gets a legacy card then it's going to be so much more expensive to get and like yeah. it's not something i'd ever sell but like that weapon x was on that list where it was like He's in like the test chamber with like Sinister standing outside. Or no, is it Sinister standing outside? No, it, that no. Sinister has a test Sinister, Sinister has, has a, a different one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The champion. Had the, had They're the, uh, similar the looking, but yeah, like yeah. the the Wolverine and the yeah, he's got the glass tube. Uh, Sinister's is like got like a crack on it or something. Yeah. But um, I, I I'm probably mixing both of them in my brain. But yeah, I had to go and get People that one immediately. Yeah. <laughs> They're both yeah. Dudes and tubes. What can yeah. we say? One's a test uh, subject, the other's a test subject. Yeah, I mean, in a way, a world's player is kind of a test subject. With me. <laughs> but um, do you have a favorite? This is sort of derailing it. If we're cool, moving on from legacy cards. But do you yeah. have a favorite character that you like to design? Where it's like, we get to make another Batman set. Awesome. That means I get to make a. And I know you said Spider Man. Yeah, your I favorite, said Spider Man. You know, you know, honestly, I'm I, I'm uh, I, I'm a big fan of Sinister Syndicate. So, okay. Like, yeah. Every time we revisit Sinister Syndicate, I get excited. And it's always good because when you guys did the I'm sorry, Spirit Force of Spider Man, that was when you gave them the pseudo JSA style. Yeah. When you did it, and then it would share, and you made the Kingpin that could do it for farther away as away. And then you did the uh, Earth X Sinister Syndicate. And that one was different in the way that you had six on the team. They got the bonuses where they had a certain amount on the team. Hey, if, if Knockback comes back, then I get to play Frogman again. Oh, Frogman. That's true. Yeah. Look at that. Knockback I've been waiting. Yeah. I have baby. seven of them. You I've know. been waiting. <laughs> Jeez. So right. long. Guess, guess the mechanic for uh, uh, Sinister Six and uh, Beyond Ooh, Amazing. Ooh, Beyond Amazing. Oh. Okay. Uh, so Earth X Sinister Syndicate was... They copied attacks, but then um, it was however many Beetle you had was on like your plus force, one. They got a bonus. Yeah, it was very secret sixty in that way, where they could ignore hindrance. Right, they got a plus one, uh, plus all stats. And, uh, oh man! So for Beyond Amazing, Beyond Amazing is the one where the terrain's coming out. So it it's is. possible that like it is. they hmm. Sinister. We're not dial designers. No, we're, we're no, like, oh, no, man, this is hard. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's a you know, it's like sort of a uh, you know, in the concept of a shared trait. Okay. That okay. Through it, but you know, utilizing a current mechanic. Okay. Current mechanic and shared traits. Gosh, man, I learned so much. I like the idea that the Sinister Syndicate is never like a specific group of people, but there are certain leaders at certain yeah. times. 
So I always like the idea, maybe not necessarily uh, captains and sidekicks, because I don't think Doc Ock is a captain and we make Sandman a sidekick. I don't think that's fair to Sandman as a Sandman fan. But uh, oh. I could definitely see a trait where certain, like, what? Sandman slaps, dude. Sinister oh. Swap. Ooh, right? Ooh, Sinister Swap, yes. We got, we got. We have uh, all these different versions got, uh, of Sinister the, Syndicate. But with everyone, have Fearful that? Four. No, I think like Kingpin, Doc Ock might have Sinister Swap. There's a few. There's but a few that like are kind of. Frightful Four have what, Simeon? They have an ability that if they're on the team, right? Maybe a Frightful Four type trait. Though that where when they're on the team, you know, like how Titania or not Thundra, you know, Thundra, it's the wizard that gives Hyde. them that though. Right. No, no, no. They all have their own but trait. We, we've done that before. They have done that before. The wizard's the one that gets to reform the fright yeah, before. Yeah, but then they all have their own trait, though, Simeon. That lets them oh. do something else, remember? Oh, that would be one person. Never mind. A hush fell over the crowd. So we can be as loud as we want. Oh. Barnstable announcement. It's in the name. Sin. It's in the name. So it's sinister. Oh. Sinister? Is it sinister or is it six? Is it a trait where, like... Syndicate, six. Rally sinister. die? Six on a rally die? Okay. A six rally yeah. die. Ah, yeah. all right, all right, all right. Six. All right. Six. A lot of six rally dies. Okay, okay. I like that. I do that a lot then. Oh, man. Hmm. hmm. Green Goblin has a green six, maybe. Oh, red Goblin, a red six. <laughs> Hydro Man, a blue six. Maybe we make it super wacky. I feel like, I I feel like Craven cool. might have like uh, some pretty sharp knives, maybe. Yeah. Like, Ooh, a little, I don't, a little replacing blades action with, with the, big, with big like, old six. Yeah. <laughs> I know Calder likes rolling a crit hit and then a, a six on top of it. It's blades. awesome, dude. It's the best feeling in the world. Are you yeah. kidding me? Seven damage blades, so cool. Crit hit, roll six on blades. It's insane. Uh. You take that risk and it pays off. It's the there is there is a video where I shout very loud. Yes. For a Thursday throwdown. Quite loud. I don't know what sets we were playing, but we were playing through every set during quarantine. Uh, yeah, I got very, I got very excited. Animated, yes. It had to say the least. It scared me. It was. I did not see it coming. I'll be scared. Of my brother, who was also visiting at the time, and I was like, I'll be really quick. I'll be, yeah, yeah. I probably scared a lot of people, but yeah, okay. We uh, we always hear we have a decent pulse in the community, and we like to try to reach out to people. So, in talking about villains, people love villains. They love like a villain heavy set, you know. How do, you, how do you feel about that, making a villain heavy set? When you know, like, superheroes, people also love superheroes. People love the main thing. So, like, when it comes down to Spider-Man, you know, who is Spider-Man without his villains? He's yeah. still awesome, yeah. obviously. So you're like, we got to do the Sinister Six really good. We have to make them really cool. So when it, when it comes to that, like... And, and, of course, you know, when you're... Heroclix is an uh, opportunity to sort of recreate your favorite comics yeah. on, on yeah. the tabletop. So... You have to have someone fight against. You right. Know, like, yeah. you're, you know, if you um, were here at World Championships, of course, you know, people build the meta teams and right. and mix and match what's the optimized for the game. But, you know, a lot of people, the enjoyment of the game is trying to recreate the teams out of comics. So you're going to have the good guys fighting the bad guys, yeah. you know, the, the heroes versus the villains. So you need to have the villains to do that. I love when uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Like multiple venues do it, but like when, um, like I've done it at multiple venues. I should say, but like when they have like a build a villain, build a villain, build a hero team. Oh, I love that. And then yeah. Yeah, you like roll so off fun. and you pick which, which one you play, and yeah. your opponent plays like the opposite. That's always like really fun. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. you end up with like really semi thematic battles. Like one time I had like weird hokey Avengers with Triple H versus like Lobo <laughs> and Doomsday. <laughs> And I was like, that's, what is that? Like, you know, like, yeah. Triple H isn't really a hero, but, you know, whatever. He, he turns heel, turns face I mean, sometimes. He, he kind of has to pick his shoes he's, where he's at. So he's definitely like, more of a heel throughout yeah. the full career, but. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was wonky. It was, but it's fun. I really like that because it, it does lend to, like, thematic stuff. Uh, we've been doing a lot of, like, boss battles where it's, like, everyone bring X-Men. One guy's playing, like, Master Mold and, like, a bunch of Sentinels and stuff, like, Danger Room Constructs. Yeah. And those have been, like, really fun at, like, the one venue. Um, they take forever, but, like, you know. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. If you don't time them, yeah. Yeah. We're not. Well, no, it's just, like, one big, like, we show up and, like, we're, like, four hours. Oh, Here we geez. go. Like, yeah. It's a D&D &D session. You guys have just Basically, there. that's what well, it is. Let's yeah. fight the 1800-point Galactus. Like, we'll, we'll be here a while. Yeah. You know, but it's cool. 
what you mentioned is another cool thing to talk about, especially from a design standpoint, but specifically uh, mixing Marvel DC or indie stuff like WWE, Turtles, Star Trek and stuff. How does the set design go about for things like that? You know, when you're like making a Marvel set compared to a DC set, and you know that both of those are modern and have to interact with each other. Same thing when you have to make a Star Trek set with totally different, you know, powers and abilities, and they're not superheroes. Or like WWE, I know it's no longer, and I know there's no current indie stuff in modern now, but uh, still, for just how, throughout your career, and you've had to do this, how do you, you know, Ninja Turtles, whatever, how do you make that balance? How do you get the design teams talking and figuring out the crossover and making sure that it's not only thematic for those characters, but works, you know, with other sets and stuff? Yeah, it's, um, I think the biggest challenge, and I, I think our uh, our players and our collectors, you know, can make the mental leap of um, our power, their standard powers are sort of named in ways that are uh, evocative of comics. Yeah. Um, but you can imagine them on the, in, in, in game, the effects that they do in game how they would be uh, translated or how they translate into a different uh, license or universe. So, mm-hmm. like in you know, Star Trek, for example, right. um, you know, super strength is super strength, and you know, there can be super strong characters, super strong aliens, so that makes sense. But some things that are more, um, you know, comic specific, um, you know, utilizing them. Uh, what would what would they represent in this Star Trek? All right, guys, right. Um, so that's uh, that's an interesting, you know, creative challenge to uh, to to think about that universe, you know, sort of yeah. step back yeah. from the comic uh, universe and think of how uh, how can this be represented. Um, you know, works both directions of how can this power, what would this power represent in the Star Trek universe? I'm going to use go with the Star Trek. Sure, yeah, yeah. How, how, what could this power represent in the Star Trek universe, but also, uh, oh, we want to recreate this uh, really memorable scene or, you know, thing that happened or uh, aspect of this character um, and what power best represents it. So, like, you know, a transporter effect. You know, transporters right. are important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, telekinesis. It's not one of my tele- favorites. Uh, tele- a transporter mishap with the the Thomas Riker. You guys. Yes. Got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh exactly. my gosh, that was awesome. Because like, it's like one of the weirdest. I, I don't want to get into like Star Trek lore because Calder Please hates don't. it. Yeah. Please don't. But thank you. Um, <laughs> you're essentially like your like body's like destroyed when you go through a transporter, and then it's just recreated. But like yeah, it's Thomas a, Riker's it's a philosophy like philosophy challenge. Yeah, like like you're you're te- you technically die every time you use it. But Thomas Riker ah. is the same as William Riker, um, but he just like was the the non transported material that like didn't get beamed off the planet. There was like a storm. Yeah, there was a little there was a little glitch. Yeah. And they like and instead of instead of like him just disappearing as he was getting beamed up, the copy appeared. But he never disappeared. Yeah. So they left, and he just was there on the planet, like, okay, it's now I'm stranded. Horrifying. <laughs> like, a horrifying experience. And he's technically, like, the more original William Riker. Yeah. But uh, he's, like, yeah, like, left on this planet. So the way you guys did that, where, like, if you TK William Riker, you can bring this, um, this Thomas oh. Riker from off the map. Like, I was just, like, like, that was, like, a really, like, nailed it moment for me with that set. Um, yeah. There's a lot of, like, I mean, Next Gen's, obviously, like, I didn't grow up with the original series, but Next Gen was, like, something I always watched, and then, like, obviously, like, went on, like, Voyager, Enterprise, Deep Space, like, all that stuff, but Next Gen was, like, so good, and I love that set, I bought so much of that set, and, like, the way you guys represented the cues, um, you know, like, the card, like, Okay, I'll stop. But like, I'm. No, I, I'll, I'll keep nodding. Manu- I'll be like, yes, Picard and card maneuver. Right up to someone. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it is. It like, it doesn't even like really make sense in like the context of the universe, but it's still like, you know, the fact that he did it is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, uh, 
I don't, I don't even know what I was saying. I just I'm gushing over that. Like I really like the way you guys designed yeah. that set, but yeah. but specifically it a, like it, it was a lot of fun to you know we we see Marvel and DC comic characters you know throughout the years. Yeah, and it's really fun to play in a new sandbox. Right. You know, to say like oh well, you know how, how like I said how how can we how can we take this and, and recreate it and represent it well, and like, within the context of our powers and our I love that you can you can tell that like the people whoever like it may be that's like designing certain figures uh, like not only do they like, they know the character and like know like the history of it but like they like they they enjoy the characters they like that's something they're passionate about because they you really bring it out in like um, certain characters like quite deeply like you know like that Thomas Riker that's like that's my best example because that's just like kind of a throwaway character that like most i won't say most fans but like a lot of like casual watchers probably like forget about or yeah. don't even i know my first yeah. watch through i totally forgot about it like, yeah what if i just surprised you and just like yeah actually i've seen all of star trek now no, just you were like actually thomas Riker and does reappear did, yeah, he, well, he, he, he does come yeah. Back, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah but if he, if calder had said that i'd be impressed yeah true <laughs> but thomas Riker did reappear oh wow ah, yeah, yeah i know it's but, but yeah it's um uh, to answer your original question and oh. kind of play off of what you just said you know the first step is research 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 yeah you know, like, yeah um which you know in that case might mean watching a lot of star trek you know to, 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 what a terrible <laughs> job sorry. I, yeah. i'm sorry i can't imagine I have, I have getting paid I'm for i yeah. i'm so sorry now is a really sorry, good guys. time to talk to people i hate I yeah hate yeah no that's I'll hopefully right. be back but now is a good time for us to get the footage we've been looking for yep Thank you so much, there. Scott. You it's guys, great. Yeah, you guys keep great job. Doing Star Trek stuff. Drop in to say sorry to steal him. I, Scott, yeah. thanks for doing so long of an interview. I've been looking over, going, man, they're still going. No, this no, is so no, cool. It's so fun. Chat. It's literally yeah. so fun. I'm excited yeah. to watch it. Yeah. Man, I'm a part of this. <laughs> All right. But I mean, yeah. Now that he's gone, uh, we can actually get back into Star Trek. No. <laughs> no, I, I know, like Star Trek's. So, I will say to piggyback off of like this original conversation where it's like, you guys have to make it balanced so that it's playable in Marvel and DC. Something that I think I never expected as a Heroclix player to like get this, like hear this complaint so often is like, well, he's just a regular guy. Why can he damage Superman? And I'm like, well, it's a game. He like, it'd be really like dumb and bad if he couldn't. Cause like, you know, if, I, if I'm playing like my normal people that are, you know, Which USS Mary Enterprise Jane crew. be able to do against Superman. Right, well, yeah. It's, but I mean, you know what? Incap him a lot. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Like there, there has to be workarounds because I mean, obviously, like phasers wouldn't do anything to comic book Superman, but it's a, like it's a game mechanic, so it has to like meld. And so, do you guys ever find it like frustrating where um, you're trying to design a figure and like obviously you know you can't have Worf like with like a four damage twelve attack, but you, I mean, I think there actually is a Worf with a twelve attack, but. Um, you guys, you still have to keep him in like the realm of like what is real for yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, it's a game, so yeah. you, you you know you you can't a hundred percent accurately represent you know what a character should should do in the right. comics because otherwise you know you just play every, Superman. Every win, Thanos you know, out there would be like yeah, yeah exactly. snap the like, like half the team away. Yeah, yeah, like it, like it, it, you know. So so first and foremost, like you you have to be able to make characters that can have some function in the game right um that uh, so that there's a there's a reason to play them or on the flip side like you said you know if it's a if it's a, a you know weak character or, you know just a regular person that they do something that's useful um or on the other side like the ultra powerful you know cosmic entity whatever like has to be defeated you know you have to have be able to have a meeting yeah. defeating them or else it wouldn't be a fun game <laughs> you know like on on that like i think the community i don't know how big the split is but like i don't like personally i feel a split because uh with disney plus the ultron infinity people were like oh you should have been like 300 points this and that and i was like but they like technically like if they if you wanted the show accurate one he would just like you put him on the board and you just win. I was like, that's that's what you wanted. Like, I get it. Like yeah, powerhouses are cool, but rather than having like a crazy like problematic like high point like you know I win every yeah, game kind be of a thing. Completely different problem. <laughs> right. Like rather than that, like I thought it was really cool that like like this is the Ultron that's collecting the gems, and when he collects the gems, he does just win. So like 
I was like, I thought that was a really cool compromise that you guys did, where it was like, you know, um, like he's collecting the gym, so he's he's still powerful. He still has great stats and powers and stuff. But once he does get like that sixth gem, like yeah, the game just ends. Like those twenty mission points. He was on a mission. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that's basically. I mean, obviously he's a bad guy, so he can't win the whole time. But um, but yeah, like I I thought it was weird that people didn't understand that, or like it, maybe they understood it, but they were just hoping for like you know a God Emperor Doom version where it was just like he's bursting through different realities and like. Like, sure, that, that's a cool version, and it's cool. It makes sense. Like, that's what some people would want. But personally, I, I like, thought you guys nailed that one. Like, I, I feel like I'm in the minority with that, but it's still, like, just, like, a really cool way to display um, something that is a threat because he's not as threatening on dial as he is in, like, the implication of what he's, like, gonna do, which is, you know, he hit six people, he collected six gems, 20 mission points, and then, like, what do you, you can't even hit him now the game just ends you just lose yeah. so um, yeah that's i mean again it, it's it's a game first uh yeah. you know it's not it's not a uh comic simulator right um and uh so uh everybody has to be able to win and everybody has to be able to win. <laughs> yeah it, and it wouldn't or be exciting wouldn't be or fun. playable i mean I, it wouldn't be playable like if yeah, if there wasn't like some sort of stakes or like some sort of like way to like win and lose at for any character, but like yeah. you said, Superman. I, I, do you remember, you know, back in the days of playing Heroclix, where it was, oh, we talked about uh, 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 Legacy Thanos. Yeah. Uh, uh, that you know, for the early part of the game, it did come up a lot. Where oh, you've got invulnerability. I've got None two of my damage. Guys do more yeah. than two damage. Yeah. I need to crit hit to even put one click of damage into you. Yeah. Like that's not a fun experience to get to that point in the game. Yeah. So, so I will say, yeah, yeah, we might need to, you know, up the power level of the street level people right. to be able to, and and lower the power level of the cosmic level people. So there's like a happy medium in there that. Daredevil can punch Galactus and still have a chance. You know? Right. Yeah. Which, I mean, uh, it's just the way it, like, it has to be because, like like you said, it's a game first. And, like, yeah, it wouldn't make sense if, if I put Galactus on the table and everyone that wasn't, like, cosmically powered, like, near his level was just instantly, like, KO'd. It wouldn't be yeah. something that you could play. Like, But, yeah, uh, when designing stuff like that, like, you know... Um, these like more street level or just like humans like star trek stuff uh you guys have to like work within those bounds where it's like yeah like william riker's just armed with a phaser but he still has to be able to like do three damage because like you said like invulnerability invincible like those things exist so it's like yeah he's damaging superman comically that doesn't make sense like but you know in the context of this game it has to um I will say one of my favorite things about indie stuff, while we're still sort of kind of in that area, uh, designing the WWE team ability where it just like brought them to like a whole different level as far as like indie stuff goes. Um, I know you That was a challenge. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it was really cool where that landed to, again, make it where it's like a wrestler can actually hold you know their own yeah. with uh people who are shooting at <laughs> you know like I, yeah <laughs> my favorite was uh in 2019 um i won the south dakota state championship uh but <laughs> i was running wrestlers uh with prez ricard he was the only not wrestler but uh sean michaels delivered a sweet chin music to ko onslaught <laughs> Like, the 2x2 the two two onslaught got taken out by Shawn Michaels and, like, right when time was called. And so it was, like, a very, very cool moment in, like, my uh, Heroclix career. But um, it was just, like, iconic because Shawn Michaels, like, just, like, sliding across the map and kicking this guy that's, you know, a skyscraper, like, size. Uh, for me, it's really cool. I don't know if, like, other players at the venue were like, yeah, but, uh, yeah, that was, so the WWE team ability... Um, if you guys were to get another license, is that something that you would revisit? Like a team ability that's like across the license that kind of brings them to like some sort of. Yeah, that's been done in WWE. That's been done in Street Fighter. Um, right. You know, so uh, 
a team ability is a good uh, avenue for uh, the design to be able to have a mechanic that goes throughout every character in a set uh, without having to saddle it with a text-based power printed on every single card of, right. of a shared trait that goes across, um, which then takes away space on the, you know, literal right. space on the card, yeah, but also just space. mental yeah. space of, uh, of playing the character uh, uh, that, uh, that we want to use to, to really customize or, or um, focus on what what's uh, important for that particular character. Right. And I, I know that was like a special case because there's like the other PAC and it was like a multiversal or like, you know, single universe kind of like rule book that went with it. So like other properties, you probably won't have that big of a challenge, you know, like if you, if you did do... Um, like G.I. Joe, for example. I mean, if wrestling just allowed, you know, guns and lasers, yeah, it yeah. wouldn't I be mean, a problem. They allow undead wizards and uh, <laughs> people who can teleport sometimes. Like, they, they do have, like, crazy stuff. But, um, yeah, it's been a while since they allowed uh, weapons in the ring, really. Uh, <laughs> and never lasers, for whatever reason. Uh, they did have, like, you know, poison mist, stuff like that. But, yeah. But, yeah the flames uh, shooting up on the uh, <laughs> Right, the, 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 the turnbuckles. turnbuckles. Yeah. Which was used as weapons at one point. Uh, yeah. They did, you know, and, and represented on the, on clicks. <laughs> yeah, on clicks. Um, man, those were so fun. Uh, but yeah, like if, I don't think it'd be as challenging to for like other properties as like WWE probably was. Uh, I know, like that's one thing that like me and Calder like really really enjoyed was that whole set. Um, but I don't. Was that a unique challenge? Like compared to like let's say t- like the first turtle set that you guys did. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah. The, the WWE was a, very much a unique challenge, fun, um, and uh, but like I said, because it's uh, you know the, the game is range, range is uh, it's a it, big it's a big factor, part of the game, yeah. and, and range is uh, uh, wrestling is by nature a close combat uh, yeah. activity right. in, in a range game. So being able to make it where they can hold their own and be viable uh, was absolutely a sure. Man, I I mean, I personally think you guys knocked it out of the park. I think that, that was, um, I know like when they first, when they first got released, a lot of people were like, we're not letting these like, be, like they can't be targeted from range, blah, blah, blah. Like we're not like playing them. I was like, well, like Batman teams have been around for a long time. Yeah. And like stealth's like a problem. Like if you don't have any close combat and like you can't see through stealth, a Batman team can totally like do the same thing to you. So like that was my argument. And, like eventually, some people like got on the right side of history on that one. Uh, like started playing WWE with me, but uh, but yeah, I I think it's like you know it's obviously easier to adapt certain things like comic book lines like turtles and like those other properties than it is for uh, you know probably like TV shows like Star Trek and stuff. But even Star Trek, you know, phasers and you know the bat lift you know you've got like all like this stuff that makes sense like you said the teleporters for like tk and like phasing and stuff um but yeah but i don't know like i always do think about properties that like i'm just like hmm, is there anything that they could fit in here and do you just like do you ever sit there and just think of like the all the different like characters that like absolutely fit in hero clicks to like a t like because there's there's a long list of like media characters out there oh sure that i mean just... i think i think anyone who's been playing hero clicks as long as we have you know even in real life you can look at things and go like i know how i would represent that in the hero clicks now oh yeah <laughs> or what power that 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 was uh, that, that that just happened i mean that's uh, you know our our inner geek uh, here is hero clicks player Oh but, man! Uh, but certainly seeing uh, anything in television or you know in prints or what have you, you can you know think about it in terms of like oh, you know, this was to be a Heroclix, how would you how would you recreate it on the, uh, in the game? Um, but you know it's always a fun mental exercise. We have a a small challenge that we haven't quite issued yet, but it's a previous Dial H challenge that has been issued. To, but it's like a, a dial design contest where you take, you know, your favorite property or like whatever, and like you code it and like put like the sure. the stats and like special powers or traits or whatever, 
and seeing those sometimes is really fun. Sometimes like they're really wonky or like just not at all usable, but other times you get like some really cool results and stuff. But like, yeah, it's just an exercise and uh, in like fandom essentially, because like we love the game, we love the characters, we like merge the two things, obviously, like as as you naturally would. But um, I guess to to get back to like a more pressing question, um, so. Bringing it back to Worlds, we have, you know, a few more days, and then uh, it's going to be a year before we're probably back in Graceland. Um, what would you say to, like, the people at home as far as, like, that couldn't come this year but, like, want to come next year? Um, what would you, like, say to, like, help push them over the edge? Because, like, we're trying to, like, you know, think of, like, different things, and obviously I think the community is, like, the number one uh, if you like HeroClix players or you hang out on, like, the Facebook or Discord or YouTube, like, whatever groups, even, like, HC Realms, like, the other websites that you congregate, you come here and, like, you meet the people that you've been talking to for years. I think it's one of the, like, number one experiences for that. Um, but, like, do you have any... Well, I, I you know, I'll say this. Uh, this is... Uh, everybody... We're having a lot of fun here. Uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to, uh, to to coming back uh, and holding this event. Uh, hopefully, year after year. Um, uh, I don't. Uh, we don't at this point have committed dates, but we're hoping that we might be able to keep this consistently with the same weekend, which will help with planning, uh, long range right. planning for uh, not only you know us and, and Graceland and uh, but the players. Um, but uh, yes, exactly. Like being able to meet people. Uh, uh, that you see at other shows if you go to uh, Gen Con and Origins uh, you know other other shows and they're sort of like your your convention family uh, and, and be able to see them again or people that you play with online um, uh, or for you know anyone who's moved you know you get to see your people you used to play with at yeah. your local venues uh, from where you moved from I used to play with Ed Shelton all the time yeah. because he lived in Kansas or right around Kansas City at the time and so we had like a circuit of like tournaments that like we'd always end up in, but he moved, and so now Worlds is the only time I see him now. But yeah, it's, um, you know the, the the venue is great for us as a Hero Clicks player. I mean, we have the space; we can focus on just having a lot of fun playing Hero Clicks. Like you said, uh, even in the evening, everybody's hanging out in the hotel. Uh, Graceland. I mean, a slice of Americana. Oh yeah, you know, just to be able to come here and take the tour and 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 learn about all this and 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 hear the music and and see the exhibits. Uh, the the museums are, are amazing here. Like it, it really high quality um, uh, uh, museum experience that you can, you know, maybe you walk into and you know don't think you have as much of an appreciation or knowledge base or uh, think you're gonna you know walk away learning something uh, from it. But uh, but I you know I challenge you to go through the the, the tour and, and and not be really impressed at, at you know what the man accomplished and and, and what a uh, an imprint he's made on our society. Oh um, yeah. And um, also and, like the the wall. So and barbecue. Uh, I mean <laughs> yeah Memphis you barbecue. Eat well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Tennessee does make some pretty good food. Uh, but yet yeah, there is the the wall that you can go and like sign yeah and uh absolutely. we were going past it the other night and uh one stuck out to me and like i i don't know any of the context behind it but it did say it said uh elvis saved my life and i was like i wonder like in what way like if you you want to hear that backstory yeah yeah like i really do like I, i'm like like was it the music like was it like because i mean there's no way of like really telling obviously it's not like so old oh i assume it was literally elvis that's, threw him out of the way. That's what I was car. like. I was like, it could be old enough <laughs> where, like, Elvis actually did save that person's life. Like, he physically, like, saved that person's life. I was like, it could be. Um, or, like, I mean, maybe, like, you know, his limo, like, cut off, like, a car and, like, it was going to run a light and hit this person. <laughs> you can imagine all like, sorts of scenarios. Who knows? But, like, it was, like, I was just like, huh. I'm like, that's cool. But, like, uh, yeah, like, seeing those little things, uh, like, I missed that the first time. Like, I, I saw the wall and stuff, but, like, I missed that one the first time. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of, like, really cool stuff in Memphis. And, and of course, we have to say, you could be the next world champion. That is true. That's probably so the most important Let's thing. have everybody come and, you know, 
take your shot, right? You, right. You, you can't you can't win if you don't play. So uh, you gotta come here, put it, put your team up against the best of the best. I will say, uh, see, where you, see where you're at. Tony Bruno. Um, yeah. I was with to him. That team. Amazing uh, bunch of guys. Yeah. I was and, uh, uh, a great format and the fact that uh, yeah they, they pulled out the win so he, happy for them. his first worlds was in 2018 also my first worlds um, they got top 32 in 2018 um, it was him and his brother and Rena and so yeah, 2018 I think he came in 2019 I don't remember what place he got in 2019 but I mean, essentially three years time from his first Worlds, yeah. he's now a world champion. And I just thought that was a really cool, because I, like, I yeah. saw it from the start. Like, you know, it was a short run, but, like, I saw it from the start. And, like, yeah, he instantly, and, I mean, there's other people on the team. It's not just Tony. But specifically, Tony was, like, the, the one that I had seen, uh, like, his growth throughout that little time period. And so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. But, yeah, that, yeah, that so is I a... Think, I think that's the best, you know can uh, you know, s- uh, summarize the, uh, the the experience here to say you gotta come you gotta come and experience it you gotta try it you know uh, make plans we'll make announcements uh, um, uh, hopefully earlier this year but we'll get get it on the calendar and uh, or, you know, for next year I'm saying right and, yeah uh, and uh, and make plans to, to, to come down join us we're having Absolutely. fun here yeah you know, Join us and uh, come travel to Memphis. Come play in Worlds. Come play some clicks and meet everybody that uh, that you talk with online or. You know. Right. And I mean, as as huge fans, uh, Dial H will be here whether we're streaming or playing. So, you know, that's a selling point for someone, at least one person. <laughs> well, Scott, thank you for uh, thank you. for sitting here for uh, we. Uh, let's see. For two hours and thirty minutes. Thank oh, you for wow. sitting here for so long with me. Yeah, it's been a good um, chat. But yeah, like you know, obviously, it's fun to like grab a WizKid employee and just you know stick like the pins to them and like really ask. Like we don't want to push you too hard, but like it, there is a lot of information that you have that I think people want to hear at home. So thank you a lot for for sitting Appreciate down and uh, talking. Appreciate you chatting. Happy to do it. Yeah. And uh, we we'll hope to see everybody next year. Absolutely. Until next time, uh, Calder's catchphrase.